Uh, see, you had a, a beautiful day yesterday, and yesterday it really you you really hear or heard what you wanted to hear. Science based, all the researches, you know, I presented all the scientific evidences. Rajan talked about beautifully, but Rajan brought some of the your know, philosophy and diagnostics. Today, what you will be, today we'll be hearing purely out of the box thinking because this course was designed to train Western trained physician and the healthcare provider to think out of the box. For example, we are letting them think about three bodies, gross body, subtle body, causal body. Think about a body, mind, and spirit. Think about five koshas. See how simply beautiful way yoga has described the koshas. As a Western trained physician, we learn anatomy by dissecting a dead body. The dead, this body has a physiology. The physiology becomes abnormal, become pathology. And we corrected the pathology. We become the disease treatment and the end of it. But yoga says, you know, the physiology is your pranomaya kosha, beyond your anomaya kosha. But beyond the physiology, this body has a mind, monomaya kosha. Mind is the content of your five senses. Remember, you'll be hearing a lot of things today which may not connect your scientific rational thinking, but eventually in experience, you will feel that that is the way to treat a patient, holistic. When you think about the mind, mind is the content of your five senses. And when that content gets processed, it becomes your wisdom, it becomes your intellect called buddhi. And that's your intellect sheet, Viganomaya Kosha. When that content becomes processed, it becomes your wisdom. You become Anandamaya Kosha. So you understand three bodies, five koshas and seven chakras, and you will see Rajan is going to teach you all about chakras, balancing the chakras. And at the end of this course, you will be all chakra, chakra, and chakra. You know, and Rajan is finding on that because he does it all the time, you know? But that, that's, that's normal, that's your understanding. So today we are going to go a little bit what yoga therapy is. And let me tell you the traditionally where it came from. First of all, people ask us all the time, what, kind, what type of yoga do you teach? What do you... No, we don't teach any kind of yoga. We do everything from the scripture. See, when Rajan talks about naming the books, did you notice? He never mentions any book from so-called West, you know, he, he always goes to the root where it came from. We are really teaching everything from the root. It's very, very important. We are teaching everything from Yoga Sutra, Patanjali and Patanjali Ashtanga. We don't deviate anything outside. So what happened during the process of this practice of yoga darshan, the philosophy and yoga practice, it was designed to have your self-realization. The outcome was never a health benefit. But during the process, they noticed there is some health benefits, which was essentially described to be as an adjunct therapy. But what happened in the process that the yoga practice become infused with mudras, with bandhas, your kriyas, dinacharya, daily routine, Ayurvedic philosophy. With putting all of them together, it becomes what is called a yoga chikitsa. And if you go the root text of yoga, that is the way yoga chikitsa came up. So, you always have to think outside your box. The moment you are listening to your peer reviewed article, peer reviewed journal, you will never be a good physician. Medical science is not a science. It is, a, it is a, your 
master of science and master of arts. So think about this way. In yoga, health is defined as a balance of your body, mind, and spirit. Health is defined as a strong digestion, easy elimination, a good night, dreamless sleep. Strong digestion is the food converted into seven tissues called Saptadhatu, then into ojas, which is immunity. Strong digestion is there is no smell in your excreta, no smell in your stool, no smell in your urine, no smell in your sweating. And I will come to the all over day slowly and slowly, but just giving you an idea. Sleep has to be dreamless sleep. When you have a dream in the sleep, the sleep is not any effective. So a patient comes to you as a physician or a healthcare provider, you're used to doing a called a SOAP, subjective objective assessment and plan. But now what you will do, and we'll teach you tomorrow at the end of the today, when you see a patient, doesn't matter what condition they come, you're going to check how is your elimination? How is your digestion? How is your sleep? Or health will be defined as a, we call it a, your Prana is flowing. Prana is a subtle energy, non-measurable, flowing through all the nadis, all the channels. Prana is flowing. Teja is glowing. You have a tejas. We'll talk about it. Teja is glowing. And your oja is building. When prana is flowing, Teja is glowing, Oja is building, that's your health. And also when you see about yoga therapy, I think Rajan discussed about you yesterday, you'll hear this term quite often in our, in our practice, in our conversation. Agni Deepana, Ama Pachana, Nadi Shodhana, Oja Sthapana. It might sound like a Greek, Latin, Sanskrit, whatever it is, but eventually we'll see this is the way to think. Health in Ayurveda defined. Samodosa, samadnika, samodhatu, malakriya, prashanna, atta, indriyaman, shastriti, obhidhayate. You don't understand a single word. But you understand everything. Samodosa, your doshas, body type, psychophysical body type in a balance. Samagni, your digestive fire has to be balanced. Samodosa, samadnika, samodhatu, malakriya. All the dhatu is a body tissue has to be in a balance. Malakriya, all the excretion has to be in a balance. Prashanna atta, atma, your soul has to be contained. Indriya mana, all the five senses will be connected through your mind. Shastri iti obhidayate, this is called health. See, when you are presenting all this stuff, everybody at the beginning, I'm sure Rajan remembers all of this. Where do you have all this information? Rajan says, I have information I collected from all over. I said, I collected information and many of the information is from our own self experiential practice. But where can you find, take it. We give them all the slides, all the papers, everything, but they were not happy. We are more. Actually with the push really came up this book, the book I wrote, exactly what we are teaching is there. Yoga therapy, Ayurveda and Western medicine, but look at the next title, subtitle, a healthy convergence. Means when you do all the three, healthy convergence. Then look at a picture of that. It's a picture of Albert Einstein and it's called Rabindranath Tagore. Albert Einstein is a scientist, Tagore is a philosopher. So when a science meets a philosophy, it's a 21st century medicine. So I'm going to start on you now to more about mudras, bandhas, kriyas, and you will see even in the mudras. Rajan talked about you, you know, five elements, you know, space, air, fire, water, earth, and what the Ayurveda says and how the organ there, but you will see today will be a little different. It will be connecting your thought process. Space is a big, big finger. Air, mobile, most mobile is your index finger. Fire, this is the one fire touching. Water, earth, and then what you will see more and more is that the law of Ayurveda is the law of opposite, the law of balance. All the attributes we have, 
It's called the gunas. I will teach you more on the gunas. You look at the gunas. The gunas, when they get balanced. So think about this is the air, this is the fire. When the air is get controlled by the fire, and when your hand is like this, it is your pitta balancing mudra. The moment you put your index finger down with a thumb, you are doing completely doing opposite of your vata because this air element you are balancing. You will see the connection so well. If you see this one is a water, this is the earth. I'll come a little bit, but again, the two schools fine. Before I start, I want to share with you just a minute of a video I just got. I love this video. Just take a look at it. It's called Return to Eden. Uh, Rajan, I really want you to see this video very carefully because this is the one answers everything. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, let me go view, enter full screen, enter full screen. Okay. Listen to it very carefully and look at it. Just a moment. I think I need to go back for the uh, sound. Do you hear the sound? Probably not. Uh, let me do it one more time. Yeah, no sound, yeah. No sound, isn't it? Uh, what did I do? If you send me the link, I can play it from here. Uh, you become very small on my screen. What did I do on the screen? Okay. Uh, let me just see, try, try one, one, one more time in the desktop. I'm sorry, I'm taking the time, but this is a very, very important, a very important one. Return to Eden. Sorry. Okay, what I need now, I need to open it up. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share the sound. Then I'm going to play it. So I'm taking a little time. Okay, now see if you can, if you can hear the sound for me. Do you see this one, Rajan? Uh, yeah, but no sound. No sound yet? Mm. Stop sharing. Is this a movie? It's a movie. Okay. Let me see if I can get one more time. Uh, Dilip ji, yeah. I think what you need to do is on when you play this share screen on the side, um, on the top, you see more. If you bring it down, you I need to do uh, share sound. Uh, I, did. Sound. I, did. I did. I did already. Let me see. Uh, I don't need this.
No, you don't you don't hear the sound still? No. Just last time, one more time. If not, we're going to give it up. Okay. Uh, 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 one more. Somebody time. mentioned in the chat box that if you remove your earplugs, it may help. So somebody put that on the chat. My earplug. Maybe the sound is connected to your Bluetooth only, probably. Okay. Okay. You got it. You got it. Uh, that's okay. I'm going to, uh, you are absolutely right. The both the input has to be same. Anyway. Do anybody hear my sound? You hear the sound? So yes. I'm playing that same yes. movie, Dilip. So you yes. can tell me. We can where hear you. We can yeah. hear you, Dr. Arjun. Okay, here we go. So where would you like me to play? Just, uh, this is this is not the one. Return, return of Eden. No, this is not the one. Okay. Let me let me send it to you. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Go. Uh, just uh, you unshare it. Okay. One second. You, you uns you unshare now. Uh, yes, just, I will unshare. Okay. You're not unshared yet. You are still. You are, okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, I might, I might show it at the end, you know, so you might, uh, because this was a very important information just to see. Uh, can you, Rajan, you can take a look, return on Eden is called the, uh, uh, how to get out of the peer review journals. Uh, you sent me by email? Uh, no, uh, no I, did, I, did, I didn't send you yet. And I'm, I'm still, I'm still, trying to get the slides connected. Uh, no, they're asking me for a password. That may be the one, that may be the reason. Okay. If I... Avani has sent a YouTube link. Now, do you see me? Do you see my slides now? Yes, we do. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, okay. so what you talked about that uh, in the yoga was infused with mudras, bandhas, kriyas, dinacharyas, ayurveda, and became say as a yoga, as a therapy. And these we call it a complementary practices. So the mudras, and also there is another called acupressure, which is a marma therapy. And you will see that we'll talk about more and more marma and Rajan is also going to talk to you. It is basically the neurophysical connector for the flow of prana to the organ of healing. And we'll come and talk about a little bit more and we'll practice a little bit more. Bandhas, we call a spiritual lock, we call it grantis and holds the pranic energies and abandas causes your upward ascending of your energy, spiritual energies in the chakras, which essentially ends up, we call it kundalini jagaran from the muladhara chakra to the sahasra chakra. Kriyas are basically six kriyas. We'll talk about it. It's called sharir shuddhi. Sharir shuddhi means body cleansing. And remember, these are not evidence-based, a practice-based. Yoga therapy primarily from Sharir Shuddhi to your Mana Shuddhi and Atma Shuddhi. Mind has to be cleansed and Atma has to be cleansed. Okay, very interesting. I, I don't know if Rajan remembered. Rajan was in, uh, in Esviasa in India and uh, you know, he was there on the scrim and he has been pretty well received by all of them. And he just mentioned only one, one word, the whole yoga therapy based on called the Mana Shuddhi and Atma Shuddhi. And Rajan, you can tell the people that they, what, what was the outcome? He got this 
Manobastro. Remember, Rajan? Are you listening or no? Okay. Yes, He's I'm laughing. listening and I'm laughing. You're laughing. Great. So let's first start with the mudras. Mudras are so popular in Indian culture. This is, you know, New Delhi Airport, New Terminal. The moment you arrive in New Delhi Airport, you are received with all these hand mudras. Mudras, you can name it. Mudras are not in the hands. Mudras in the whole body. We have a neck called Brahma Mudra. We have a asana called your yog. yog Mudra. Mudras are in your in your eyes, you know, in your tongue. You know, Kesari Mudra. You might know all of them. Mudras are in your you know Bharat Natyam, but Indian classical dance. What the classical dance is? Jatha Hasta. Tatha drishti means your hand touches you, connects with your eye. Jatha drishti tatha mana means eyes are the extension of your brain. Jatha mana tatha bhava. Bhava is your heart. So hand, brain, and a heart connects. That is your healing. So if you look at that, why the hand? The hand has a, a body. If you look at anatomy, I didn't put the picture, but I can show you a picture, which is, uh, I always keep it in my book. And, and, and for all of you, I hope, Hope you'll be able to see it if I show it from my book. This is called the way the brain looks at your body. And, and you'll be surprised to see, we call it a, 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 a homunculus or a little man. You, you I, need to stop sharing the screen. I then need to stop the sharing the screen. I can do that. It is stop sharing the screen. Okay, you can see it now. Yes. In speaker, you can, people can see yeah, it. You yeah. can yes. yes. I'm sorry, I should have made a slide out of it, but you know, I just came last time it came. So now what do you see? You see the way the look the brain looks at your hands? Half of the brain, motor cortex, controls your hand. Rest one-fourth controls your head and neck, and rest one-fourth controls the rest of your body. So your brain, if you even look at from your a traditional uh, system, that your, your brain is controlling. Half of your brain controlling your hands. Mudras, as I said, prana is the primary, senses are secondary. And remember in asana, senses are primary, prana is a secondary. And we all talk about electromagnetic waves, you know, charges, positive, negative charge, but primarily it is a neurophysical connector for the flow of prana to the organ of healing. It affects instantly in opposite side of the body, Generally, we practice with the pranayama. Remember, this is the flow of prana to the organ of healing. And pranayama also is a control, restrain the prana. So when you do the kapalbhati pranayama, we'll be doing kapalbhati pranayama, maybe 30, 40, 50 in each mudras. There are 10 mudras. We'll do about 400, 500 kapalbhati Practicing alone, you can do it for three to 30 minutes, two or four times a day. And you will see the hands. Hand have been used everywhere, you know, in the prayer, in religious services, and you'll be surprised of what the hand does to us. So this will be a little different than what Rajan is going to talk to you. Universe is made of five elements. It's not a big bang theory. For there was space, then came air, Air had a friction caused fire, 
Fire melted the cloud from water. Water froze into earth. Five elements are present in my body. Space is in my lung, in my stomach. Air is the movement of my intestine in my heart. Fire is my digestive fire. Fire is my vision. Water, it holds our body together. 70% of our body is the water. And also like a dough. When you put a dough, it puts together. And earth is your grounding structure. So with all the five elements, you will see that we get a three different body types. We've got everybody. When the space and air is there, we call it a vata. Vata main attributes of guna is a mobile. They're mobile, they're dry, they're light. And for yoga therapy, which is based on Ayurvedic philosophy, the law of opposite. And you'll see that this, this present representation of the five elements of the hands will be able to balance all the gunas. When the main component is a fire, like Rajan talked about the pitta, you know, it's very controlling, you know, very organized. If you go to pitta house, you'll see all the clothes are in order, you know, in, in color coded, all the shoes in order. Pitta. Then, but, but when the imbalance, they're very angry. Anger is their really imbalanced mode. And what when they get a very imbalanced, they get a very fearful. They're very anxious. And finally, the kapha is a grounding, earth and water. And you will know by looking at the body, they're in a, they're, they're in a totally in a disorganized, but it's a controlled, disorganized environment. I'll talk more about it when I talk about Ayurveda. So think about it. This mudra, we call it Dhano mudra or Gana mudra. You will see every, every yogis or every do meditation is does. It's a fire element and air element. And in your rational thinking, you can think what it is balancing. And, and, and in Ayurveda says, Vata pushes Pitta. So in yoga therapy, this is your Pitta balancing mudra. We will talk about more and more Pitta related disorders, all the inflammatory disorders, disease of your liver, disease of your intestine, disease of your heart, is an opita related disorder. This is a value. Look, look at how beautiful it is. Piggy can explain. Air element, which was very mobile for the vata. Vata is very mobile, very dry, very light. And you are controlling that vata. This is called a vayu mudra, controls vata. Vata related disorders, neuropsychiatric disorders all the psychiatric disorder, neurological disorders, and musculoskeletal disorders, primarily due to your vata. Touch your space and fire. Think about space, what it does. All the, your sound travels through your space. So Shunda Mudra is a wonderful mudra for improve your hearing. I had a very interesting, a guy comes to my class, you know, he comes, one day he came to my class. He's doing all the asanas, all the practice with the Shunna Mudra. So I said, John, what happened? It was so funny. He says, today I forgot my hearing aids. So you have interesting people. Prithibi Mudra. Think about it. This is the earth element, grounding element. So what it is, it's balancing what? Kapha. It's balancing Kapha, Kapha-related disorders. Fluid related disorders, you know, your tumor, muscle, and you'll see these are called endomorphic, ectomorphic. When you come to Ayurveda, you will see very clearly. And also look at the ring. The ring is here in the grounding finger, and it's called a Bibaha Mudra. Why you put it there? Remember me at the end, I will show it to you what Bibaha Mudra means. Surya Mudra, think about in the grounding, when you put the fire on the ground, the fire is on the top, it is. You're digesting all your non-hitting elements. Means it is a hitting element which is going to digest your high cholesterol. Anything high chemicals in your body. Very wonderful mudra is a Surya Mudra. Varun Mudra is a water 
balance in the water element. What is that? Your actually kapha primarily for your bladder. When there we have a bladder control, like like a woman has a little bit of a stress incontinence and your varun mudra, and actually you practice your kapalbhati pranayama in a varun mudra, and also for the male with a benign prostatic hypertrophy (BPH) you practice kapalbhati pranayama with a varun mudra. Varun mudra also got a body fluid, so fluid even the skin. People don't understand all the skin disorders are due to your sympathetic overdrive. When you get a sympathetic overdrive, you get a called a vasoconstriction. Blood vessel constricts underneath the skin, and all the disease in the skin starts. The treatment of any skin disorder is your vasodilatation, sub. Cutaneous vasodilatation. We do it, you know. We do a lot of lot of testing. We do. It's called your galvanic current resistance, and we call it heart rate variability. So we have we have done all this stuff because we're very science oriented. This is Shakti Mudra. You touch your ring finger, little finger. It gives you strength. Wake up in the morning. You don't feel any strong anymore. Do actually what we do. We do a Kapalbhati Pranayama with the Shakti Mudra. It's a it's a wonderful, wonderful mudra. Apuna Mudra. It is your middle finger, ring finger, and thumb. And this is your call your downward force. You know there are five five sub pranas of your values: Udana Vayu, Prana Vayu, Samana Vayu, Apuna Vayu, and Vyana Vayu. Apuna is a downward force. Hmm? Udana is an upward force. Vyana is all around. Samana is in your belly button, you know, in your abdominal area. And this is called a Pachan Mudra. Think about it. How beautifully yoga describes diabetes. We talk about all these, you know, insulin resistance receptors, all this stuff. Yoga and Ayurveda says, you know what diabetes is? So what? Body cannot digest sugar. Increase your digestive fire. Jathar Agni. Agni Deepana. Ignite your Agni is a treatment of your diabetes. Pachan Mudra. And if you go in the Pachan Mudra, put your index finger down. It calls Apana Vayu Mudra. This is called a Ridai Mudra. It is very important for your cardiopulmonary function, heart and lung function. In fact, I say all the time, if you're giving, getting an acute chest pain or if your heart, you will do a very mild Kapalbhati Pranayama, and I'll show you what Kapalbhati Pranayama does. It hits your diaphragm and hits your heart from the bottom very gently, causing a massage into heart, and this acts exactly like a nitroglycerin. Rajan Rajan told me one time, he lives in a thirteen story, and he he takes the steps from downstairs to thirteen thirteen floor, just for a little bit of exercise. And he said he does in a in a Ridai mudra, and he feels better when he's doing in a in a in a Ridai mudra. Linga mudra generates a heat in the body, and you will see in the babies, in the children, when there were when this phlegma, the cough coming up. They'll put their hands like this. You know, the children does all the mudras. The mudras are so experiential. You know, I have all the Western print physician comes and tells me, tell me the mudra. Is it the nerve coming? Is it all the organs coming? Is it all the way we do our photoelectric? You know, is this the this is the pancreas, or you have a color therapy in the finger, or you have a, a lot of hand. You know, the hand is called health in your hand. I have only one thing to tell them. Please, I ask you to do one thing. Keep doing the mudras, and please don't ask me any more question. If you teach a kid, like I, I was teaching even my grandson in mudras, and he he will do it spontaneously without doing anything. I have seen kids saying, "Hey, hey, you have to go to bathroom. No good man. Just okay. Press your little pinky. Press your pinky. Press your pinky." It is very very obvious for them. Our lung has three sections: lower lobe, middle lobe, and the upper lobe. 
This is the mudra, it's called Dhanu Mudra, Gyanu Mudra. When you touch your index finger and put your hand high up. If you put your hand down, this is called a chin mudra. It opens the, actually it's wrong. I'm sorry, you should have corrected it. You know, chin mudra opens the lower part of the lung. It's not the upper, it's the lower part of the lung. When you have the fingers and close your finger, this is called a chin mai mudra. Chin mai mudra opens the middle part of the lung. And then the adhi mudra opens the upper part of it. This is correct opens the upper part of the lung. This is called a balo mushti mudra. That's the way babies close their hand. Put a thumb inside and close. This is called your balo mushti mudra. So upper part of the lung is never being opened up. So we do a pranayama called the pranabho pranayama. The three components of om, a, u, ma. A from the lower part of the lung, u from the middle part, Mark on the upper part and we'll change the mudras during our A. Uh, A uh, we'll do in a chin mudra, U will do a chin mai mudra, Ma will do adhi mudra. It's a wonderful practice. You know. Vyana mudra, when you touch that Vyana, is all circulating all around the body, the Vyana vayu, the touch your, in the, and then if you just even think about space, air, fire, water, earth. When you come to Ayurveda, you think about the components, think about the disease, and then it's called the law of opposite. See, we are always attracted to our gunas. If I'm vata, I'll be always using dry food. You know, it's amazing that what a experiential practice will do to you. Experiential practice will take you to the law of balance. This is called Udana Mudra. In fact, I just somebody just sent a, a little note. A do a Udana Mudra in COVID-19. It will help your oxygenation. But remember, these are all experiential and it is the connection for your body and mind. Dhenu Mudra, Shrabhi Mudra. Yesterday I showed you. I don't know if you have not joined, but if you are if you are looking at my hand, I will show it to you a little later, maybe when I un unshare it. That this is touching the alternate fingers, right? Like index finger touch middle finger, middle finger index finger, ring finger to the little finger, and then you can do it both sides, and then you get the eyes closed. It balances your both side of your brain. That is a bringing your health together. This is called a meditation mudra. You will see when you're sitting down, you put your one hand, somebody always asks me, do you put a left hand on the top, right hand on the top? I said, why don't you try both? See what happens. Just touch your thumb together. You can always make a science out of it, but this is beyond science. This is, this is your, this is called a Joni mudra. And I'll show it to you how you can do it with your eyes closed. Female energy, divinity, the female, the feminine and femininity energy, you know, the prakriti. That's sort of the most healing power. And before I finish, I will want to show you these mudras and how easy it is to do when your mind and body is connected, which is basically is a yoga. When I'm sharing, it's hard to show it to you. Abhaya mudra and varad mudra. And this is your Buddha. It is Buddha's mudra. I'm giving it to you and nothing will happen to you. Very important mudras. Ganesh mudra, this is your, Ganesh is the removal of your obstacles. It remove your obstacles is a very powerful, you know, the health, health concerning mudras. Shankha mudra, Shankha mudra is with a thumb around, and this is controls your anxiety of your mind. The three things in your mind. First, you lose your focus. You know, when you're sitting here doing something in front of your, you know, your focus, maximum focus is 18 minutes. That's what, you know, all the TED talks are 18 minutes. But when you are put a focus, it's like Hakini Mudra. Touch the tip of your fingers. And it has automatically, when I'm talking to somebody, hand goes there in Hakini Mudra. This is a Shankha Mudra. Shankha Mudra primarily affects, you know, clears up your anxiety of your mind. And balancing of the mind is called a Dhenu Mudra. Dhenu Mudra, the Shirobhi Mudra. 
And there is Ayurveda talks very much about, it's called digestion mudra, that it helps in the digestion. What Ayurveda says that food is digested when the food is consumed with the five senses. So five senses basically, is, you know, you are seeing the food, you are hearing. You know, when you're hearing, you are you know, very quiet down, you know, you have, you have mastication, you are hearing. Eating is a spiritual process. You're testing, smelling, then you're touching the food with the hand. So generally in Indian subcontinent, they eat the rice and with a little bit of a veggie or a curry or is it called a lentils. They mix them, they put it there, they take it in the hand and in the thumb, they put it inside the mouth. Onno bhakko. Onno is your food, bhakko is your eating. Many a time you put the, all the food, use your four fingers and keep your little finger out. Little finger is called a kenyanguli. You take the food, take it there and put it in your mouth. Like kenyanguli mudra. You take the whole, whole food like a, a apple or another hand. They call it kadambu mudra. And finally, when you put all the fingers together, pick up a food and put it in the mouth, it is called a mukul mudra. And the help in digestion. Try this. I've been doing it for a long, long time, you know, in a, in a, a, a profound effect. Bandhas are primary is a practice. And during your the chakra balancing practices, you will see that all the, the asanas, pranayamas, your mudras, your bandhas, your mantras. Remember mantra, mantra. Man is your mind, tra is your container or, or vehicle put it down. Bandhas are called spiritual law. The three bandhas called a mula band. It is in the pelvic floor. You pull the pelvic up. You actually all yoga practice, you breathe out first. Take a deep breath in, breathe out and Pull your pelvis up and hold it. Udyani band is basically, you know, in a mula band, it's like your Kegel maneuver and a tremendous amount of physiological changes. And in a Udyani band, you'll see in a mula band that here on the left side, you are contracting your pelvic floor and pulling up and holding, breathing out in exhalation. Udyani band, you breathe out first, then take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out, suck your stomach in and hold. This is breath holding in exhalation. It increases your negative intra-abdominal pressure. When negative intra-abdominal pressure is high, you get a better perfusion of the intra-abdominal organs, better innervation of the intra-abdominal organs. Remember, we call it the Agni. The Agni, in Western term, Agni is your better perfusion, better innervation, better function of an organ. Jalandhar ban, you take your chin, don't bend your neck, slowly drop your chin down, touch your chest. Basically what it does, it activates your carotid sinuses. Carotid sinuses, both sides of your neck. It is at the bifurcation of the carotid artery. It is supplied by a, a branch of your glossopharyngeal nerve but basically activates your vagal system. It is a profound relaxation response. What do we do in a profound relaxation response? We do Ujjayi Pranayam. Ujjayi Pranayam, remember, I did a practice yesterday. If anybody have joined you in my practice, we practice all this. Ujjayi Pranayam, you constrict your larynx. The larynx is supplied by your branches of vagus nerve. Then during the process of Ujjayi Pranayam, we incorporate your Udhyani ban, then you incorporate a Jalandhar ban. Remember, this is also your very profound relaxation response. Jalandhar ban, profound relaxation response. Then you end with a left nostril breathing. It's called Chandra Bhedi Pranayam. All of them together are called Ujjayi Pranayam and call it Murcha Pranayam. There cannot be any better practice. And if you come to my class, come to my practice, you will see I do it all the time. And when you do all of them together, you're doing a Mula band, you're doing a Udyani band, and doing a Jalandhar band, it is called a Mahaband. 
And also what did this stream? This is doing your upward movement of your spiritual energy in the chakras. The first in the Mula Band, the energy will come from the Muladhar Chakra to Shadhisthan Chakra, Shadhisthan Pelvic Chakra, and come with your Manipur Chakra, what is at the level of your belly button. And the Udiyani Band, the energy will go from your Manipur Chakra to Heart Chakra, Anahata Chakra, to your Throat Chakra, Vishuddha Chakra. And the Jalandhar Band, it will go from Vishuddha Chakra to Agga Chakra to Shastra Chakra. And that basically is your Kundalini Jagaran energy coming from your Muladhar Chakra to Shastra Chakra. I'm going to go over a little bit of a quickly with all of you because we might do it a little bit of a practice and come to a little Ayurveda and a case discussion. And we'll also take a little bit of a break in between this whole morning session. I'll be doing it. Marma came from a Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic concept. And uh, if you historically, if you see, we talk about the, the acupuncture, acupressure, marma therapy. All the people ask you about how it works. Is it, is it the, uh, is the nerve ending? It is a, yes, there is a nerve comes to your heart, doesn't stop. It comes all the way around and probably ends up in the hand, ends up in the knee or the, in your ear, somewhere in the periphery of the body. But essentially, if you look at even a Chinese medicine, the acupuncture, there is so many theories about acupuncture. But essential theory of acupuncture is it moves the chi, which is equivalent to prana, to the organ of healing through a clean nadi. Nadi has to be, what is that? Agni deepana ama pachana. Same thing is here in marma and in acupressure. It is your the prana, prana shakti going to the organ of healing. Time-tested empiric health in your hand. And generally, there are two schools. One school says, apply the pressure for 30 seconds to two minutes at each point. And generally, when you practice, you relax your hand. Hand relaxation is done through your Adhi Mudra. When you put your thumb inside and close, your hand risk relaxes. What you do, we put your hand really outside. We breathe out, breathe in, do the Adhi Mudra because the, 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 the children, when the children will do your hand, they will do the Adhi Mudra. And also, see when your hands are relaxed, your fingers are all separated. You put your fingers, put your hands in a relax, the fingers are tight. It doesn't go there. It's very simple. Another school of acupressure acup is Press about six times and 10 to 15 repetitions. The two schools, but both of them are pretty well accepted in yoga and Ayurvedic therapy. They're all represented both in the hand and the feet. And if you look at the line, these are the lines in the hand. The one above is above your hand. This middle part in the middle, lower part, same as your feet. These are the organs which are represented in the hand. And these organs are generally the diagnostic. If you put a little pressure initially and got a pain, that organ is in an imbalance. Then you slowly keep pressuring down a little bit more and the pain goes away. That means this mudra is going to be a healing for this organ. And also, I forgot one thing, in a, in a mudra, when you do the mudra, when your mudra becomes very effective, you sit down with your spine straight, eyes closed, do the mudra practice, and you press a little bit more during inhalation and release during exhalation. Immediately you will feel, you will start feeling the capillary pulsation in your finger, immediately you will feel the whole sensation of your, of your fingers. These are the organs in the feet and you can do the, exactly the same thing in the feet. So this is your thyroid point and you put your hand and just 
put enough hand in the back so you can put a, a point and constant pressure or six times pressure. Any school you thought, this is will be for diagnostic and therapeutic. This is at the side of your eyes. And generally what we do when we are in your, uh, we are in a, in, a, in, a, in a regular class, I come and make a group, you know, now probably next time we'll do, in a Zoom, you can do a breakout session, breakout, and you can practice yourself, all the mudras, bandhas, and uh, your uh, acupressure. This is your year. And remember, it's the same, same pressure and same concept. And based on the school, which you think the school can do it. And most of the time, the organs, which are both sides, the opposite side of the hand is for the opposite organ except when the organ is one, like when you have a heart is one, liver is one, and you will see it is on the same side of the organ. Heart is on my left side, we're doing on the left side of the heart. Okay, so this is again, these are not science-based, you know, pancreas is one organ, but in the central part, it is the central part of the hand, we do the pancreas. Kidneys are also in a bilateral, but do both sides, very important. After any acupressure therapy, this is a therapeutic. That's what we bring it up, that you do the kidneys at the end. When you do the kidneys at the end, basically means you are clearing up all the junk you have, all the residuals you have. This is for the ovary and testis, the lower part of your, the wrist area. This is a prostate uterus in this segment. The back of your hand, back of your hand is for your, your lumbar area. So when the low back pain, generally I do the acupressure and many a time, you know, <laughs> these are all experiential. I do the acupressure and the pranayama at the same time. Many a time I do the acupressure and your asana at the same time. I do the hand mudras and the asana at the same time. It's a wonderful practice when you combine them. There's all the spines you know, in the back. So let me do a little bit here. We'll take a few minutes break and then we'll start with the, your uh, Ayurveda and the case. Sat Kriyas. This is very important. And generally when you do it, you know, in our regular class, we used to demonstrate. I will demonstrate. It's called a neti, dhoti, basti, trata, kapal, bhati, naudi. Neti is your cleansing your nostril. We'll, we'll be doing the, with a neti part. It's very available everywhere. You put a little lukewarm water, then you put a little salt, which is called a non-iodized salt. Put it through one nostril, turn your head down, and just breathe through your mouth. And essentially all the water will come out through the opposite nose. Initially, it may not come out, because this is a purely relaxation response. Initially, a lot of irritation, slowly and slowly, all the irritations will go away. What essentially it will do, what you see, it is called a voluntary control over involuntary function. This is what exactly yoga therapy is. You are able to control the autonomic nervous system. You know, when you don't have any irritation, what the irritation does? Irritation causes your hypertension. Go to your boss's office, boss says something, your blood pressure goes high up. You go to a teenager's room, your blood pressure goes high up. But when you do neti part, your blood pressure will start coming down. So wonderful for all the head and neck, head and neck organ, vision, all your sinuses. I have, I have taught the children. And by the time they do this, I mean, they're all hooked. They have the, all the runny nose, the steroid doesn't work, everything. But similar neti part. The sutra neti, we generally do, we do a little small rubber catheter, we put it through one nostril, it comes out through our mouth, literally we floss our nostril. I do it almost every day. I do it every day, neti part, as my daily routine. It really gives a control of your autonomic nervous system. I have a, I have my, your health tracker. I can see my health tracker. So maybe next time when you're together, maybe next time I'll do it even, uh, on the Zoom, I have done many times in the Zoom. It's very nice. Dhauti, 
Gaudi, you know, yoga says if you're washing your face, washing your body, why not wash your stomach, washing your colon? Dhalti is that also you, you drink a lot of water and sit down. Actually, basically, you sit down in a, your uh, malasana. Keep on drinking two glasses of water. Two glasses of water, by the time you feel, generally it takes six to eight glasses, you stand up, you touch your soft palate, water comes out. This is called actually kunjal kriya. Kunjal kriya means it's a relaxation response. So we have a sphincter called gastroesophageal sphincter. And that's called a retching. That's called a vomiting. This is not a vomiting. This is a pure relaxation. From the stomach, whole water will come out. And there is a lot of other dhotis. This is called a vaman dhoti. It's called basra dhoti. Basra, you swallow a piece of cloth. I think I have a picture of that. We do, we do it. This is my friend, Shekhar. We teach a, called Patanjali uh, yoga therapy, teacher's training. And he's showing how easy it is to do a your vaman dhoti, basra dhoti, and as for danda dhoti, you do all of them. And I have all of them, you know, I'll, I'll show it to you once I uh, <clears throat> uh, unshare the slides and you will see how they're, how they're being used. Trata is for the eyes and basically remember the blinking is both voluntary and involuntary. So what you do, you have a flame, you look at it and keep the eyes you know, you have the eyes movement because what the eyes is, eyes are supplied by the four cranial nerves. Optic nerve, we call it SO4. There's a muscle called superior oblique supplied by fourth cranial nerve. LR6, lateral rectus muscle supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. And a branch comes from a trigeminal nerve. So four cranial nerves you're controlling. And remember, your whole body balance. If you think your body is like a car, you are going to drive the car. The wheel of the car will be your feet. So both the wheel should be properly inflated and the steering wheel is your eyes. If your eyes are not proper, your steering wheel is not going to work. Body is not going to work. This is Nauli. Nauli is called, you're again, you do a, your Udiani band, you suck your stomach in and isolate your rectus muscle and then move side to side. It causes a tremendous amount of massage of the intraabdominal organs. Remember, all the disease comes from all the, after the vital organ is the intraabdominal organs. Massaging the intraabdominal organs is a wonderful practice. The uh, other one is your uh, Kapalbhati. Kapalbhati is a pranayama. When Kapalbhati done is very slowly, it's a pranayama. But when you go to very rapidly, it is your Kriya. But remember, the rapid means for yogis is that totally effortless. That means you build up slowly and slowly. So you can do a very rapid Kapalbhati Pranayama. People always ask me, do you do Bastrika too fast, too slow? Too? Yes, you start very slow. Whole Pranayama for therapeutic purposes will be like your normal breathing. You'll be able to talk. You'll be able to sing. There will be no exertion. For us, we've been doing it for so long, we can do a bastrika as fast as we can. But what happens at the end of the bastrika? I'm talking, I'm singing, I'm totally non-effortless. Finally, the basti is cleansing your colon. We do an enema, I have the whole enema kit. Actually, I have all of the kits here laying because I have just, I have just shown it in one of my uh, you know, uh, online virtual class, and I'll show it to you a little bit at the end. I'll do the same mudras and all this stuff. And uh, <clears throat> but yogis have a fantastic. Remember, it says in stages, impossible become possible. Yogis will sit down in a water, maybe a tub of water. They learn how to relax their inner sphincter. They can suck the water in in your colon and then wash it themselves. They don't need any enema procedure at all. Same thing when you do our, that uh, Kapalbhati, there's a lot of other Kapalbhati, like they take a, your uh, water in the mouth comes out through your nose. If you have not seen it, Rajan is going to show it to you. Rajan does it very well. Shankha Prakshalan, Shankha is a metaphor of intestine. Prakshalan is a cleansing. It's a, it's a cleansing procedure for your whole intestinal tract. It is a part of the Kriya. 
but not out of the six. What it does, you keep on drinking water, keep drinking water. Maybe you need, when you, you feel a little bit of abdominal full, then you do five asanas. One is a Uttita Tadasan, Tirjak Tadasan. One of my friends is a gastroenterologist. He has done a barium meal study and they showed in during asanas, there is an increased peristalsis in the intestine. Kati Chakra Asana is the third one, waist rotation. Fourth one, another, another pose of the Kati Chakra Asana. This is called a Tirjak Bhujanga Asana. You do the Bhujanga Asana, you take your body high up, turn your head on the, right, on the right shoulder, try to look in your left foot, and the left shoulder, try to look at the right foot. This is called Udar Karshanasan. You sit down like your Malasan and put your, put your knee down, push it the knee other side, twist your body. And it's called a Udar Karshanasan or Shankarasan. Literally in a short time, within a half an hour, you'll have a bowel movement and you keep on doing it. And essentially you'll see all the clean water will come up. This is opposite of enema. This is drinking water from the top and cleansing whole intestine and colon from the top down. Wonderful practice if you want to do it. And we do it all for different body type. And this is, you know, once you understand the Ayurvedic philosophy, you'll understand it better. It's a friend of mine. He's a gastroenterologist. He published a paper that what happened, he was doing a colonoscopy. Colonoscopy is nothing. You can put a little light and look at a colon, but preparation, preparation of colonoscopy will keep you up whole night. So here, what he did, he was scheduled a colonoscopy. And this is a young girl. She comes and she says, you know what? I don't need a prep. I'm fine. He said, but, but be sure it's clean. Yeah, she comes next day. It's absolutely clean. She said, what did you do? Well, I'm a yogi. I said, what did you do? Well, I used a Shankar Prakshalan. And then he started using Shankar Prakshalan. And this is his uh, kit. He has a kit. And he gives you all the, your saline water and do the five asanas and gives instruction. And this is the right side. You're showing inside the colon. Then he compared with the standard prep and the Shankar Prakshalan, called a Shankar Prakshalan bowel prep for colonoscopy. It is a lot more cleaner, a lot more clear. And this is the parameters you can see. It is, you know, called your Shankar Prakshalan and your subject by bowel preparation. So wonderful practice for all of them. And he marked this kit. And this is the kit he has with all the instructions for how to do Shankar Prakshalan for a preparation of a colonoscopy. All the five asanas, Kati Chakrasan, Uttita Tadasan, Tirjak Tadasan, your Tirjak Bhujangasan and your Shankhasan. Panchakarma is a Ayurvedic therapy. And all of you, if you go for a cleansing your body, when your body would hold out of balance, we call it a five therapies. Nasya is a nasal therapy. Generally, primary do for the kapha related patients. Vaman is called a emesis. And it's not a emesis, actually, it is a Primarily, your the Kunjal Kriya who gives some, you know, it is also for the kapha related people. Virachan is a purgation, the one you see, like your uh, Shankha Prakshalan, do it for your Pitta, Pitta, high Pitta imbalance people. Basti, you do it for your Vata, for the imbalance of the Vata people. And Rakta Moksha is a bloodletting, and you know, bloodletting has been practiced all along. And remember, People, may, male patients has a more pitta related disorder than the women because we believe that the women has their monthly period that loses the blood and blood is the carrier of your pitta. So the male, when they get a very high pitta, pitta disease, we just tell them, just go ahead and donate some blood and give you blood and bloodletting is, is, is done. So we'll do a little philosophy of Ayurveda next and followed by a few cases. In the meantime, as you know, I always say, sitting kills, moving hills. So you have to do some stretching. And the best stretch you can ever do, you know, I have this, I have this uh, uh, chair. I always use it. I don't know if I have shown it to you. I've been doing it for years and years. These are called your kneeling stool. When you put your kneeling stool, you always keep your spine straight. 
you sit down in a kneeling stool. From a kneeling stool, what you do when you want to stretch yourself, oh, let me unshare it here. We can come back so you can see. Or you know what, I will show it to you again. But in the meantime, I just want to tell you, if you can sit down in a squatting pose called Malasan and able to get up without a support. Let's go ahead and take uh, five minutes of your, we call it a comfort break and we'll come back. This is what, 12, uh, five, uh, 12, 10, we'll start again. Maybe I have to unshare it, you know, so that, or maybe.
Okay. Uh, sitting, sitting is the next smoking, huh? So let's talk about a little bit of Ayurveda, philosophy of Ayurvedic medicine. And you will understand, as I've been saying you from the from yesterday, from the beginning of this course, is that we are not interested about the disease you have. We're interested about the person who has the disease. And only way you know about the person and only way you know about the lifestyle of the person is called epigenetics and is all about philosophy of Ayurveda. Remember what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is a philosophy. But even in India and the West, Ayurveda is converted into called the herbal therapy. It's called the golis, you know, pills and all the thing. It has been pretty much misused. And what I see in India, <laughs> you'll laugh at it if I tell you, I go to India quite often and I see, meet with the Ayurvedic practitioners, Western trained physician, obviously I'm a Western trained physician. Because of the chronic diseases, there is no therapy from both sides because nobody wants to take care of their own responsibility. They want a pill. So the Western trained physicians are taking Ayurvedic medicine and Ayurvedic physicians are taking Western, you know, Western pharmaceutical support. People like us, we practice every single day yoga as a therapy. We are disease free, medication free. We're enjoying a good quality life. So this is again, the disclosure. I was very interested to see this picture. This was in Chicago uh, <clears throat> Science Museum. And it shows a picture of Shushrut, who was Ayurvedic surgeon. And 4,000 years back, he was doing surgery. Shushrut was named as a plastic surgeon. And there was a whole article about Shushrut in, in uh, American College of Surgery in West as the father of plastic surgery. In fact, Indian Plastic Surgery Society is called Shushrut Society. Shushrut used to do a called a forehead flap. At that time, India, they used to cut the nose for any crime they made. So he created a flap called a forehead flap. He did all the facial reconstruction. I'm going to show it to you. What was the surgery at the time of Ayurveda? The word Ayurveda, you will see very clearly, Ayu is your longevity, how long you're going to live. Veda is a knowledge. The knowledge which gives us the longevity, very simple. 5,000 years old, continuously practicing medicine and is applicable for the whole universe. All the people comes and ask me about Ayurveda. I have only one simple question to them. Before the British came and destroyed the Indian system of medicine, what was the medicine which keeps us healthy, which took care of our rogir chikitsa, treatment of the disease and shastarakha, maintenance of the health? British came, destroyed the whole Indian philosophy, except in one state. The British, even the Mughal never invaded, that is Kerala. And if you go to Kerala today, Kerala has preserved all the Marma, all the Ayurveda, whole yoga, everything in Vedic philosophy is being preserved in Kerala. Uh, Rajan, if you're here, do you hear me okay? I'm having a little feedback. Yeah, everything is perfect. No problem. Perfect. Okay. If okay. You're Thank you. Feedback. Let me check to see whether somebody know every everything is clear. Yeah. See, I'm using my ear pod. You know, that's what I'm the reason because I have another another meeting going on in another room. Anyway, yeah. coming back to Ayurvedic philosophy, as I said, Ayu is your longevity. People talks about you know the science of life, science of the, this is a science of longevity. Vida is a knowledge. It's a science of life and it's an art. It's an art of self-healing. Ayurveda one, nobody wants to give it to you. Ayurveda one is called a self-healing. It's a spiritual science of healing with intuition, intellect, and love. And remember, it is more than a science. You know why? Science is what? Is experiment, observation, and inference. I'm putting sodium and chloride. It becomes sodium chloride. I'm first testing it. It is salty. I'm representing it. And then it becomes your science. But look at Ayurveda, what it is. 
This Ayurveda been observing thousands and thousands of years. Yes, this man lived only 80. This man lived 60. This man lived 40. What did he have done? Or the father had a high blood pressure. Two sons. One got a hypertension at the age of 30. One got a hypertension at the age of 60. Another never got a hypertension. What did these kids do? Not to have any genetic predisposition from the father. That is observational science. And it is more than a sign. That's what we call Ayurveda is called a philosophy. Science is you ask a question, get an answer is science. Philosophy is you ask a question, then you get a question on the question, start thinking outside the box. And that's what the video is going to show you, the wonderful video. Ayurveda, we call it the operating manual for a physical body. When you buy a car, they give you a manual how to handle the car. When you bring your whole body in this universe, this is your operating manual. Again, you remember we have talked about body is a hardware, mind is a software, spirit is a programmer. And this is, look at that, the way we spell disease, this is. And the treatment of this is, is effortless ease. So we do all the yoga practices with the ease. Effortless is therapy. Actually, disease is the failure of Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurvedic medicine is your preventive medicine. Three books, we call it Charak Sanghita, which is an internal medicine book. I have all the books with me. I studied Susrut Sanghita, it's called a surgery book. And Ashtanga Ridayam, we call it Tikole. This is a great tree of Brihat Tatra. These are the books, you know, these are the actually from Benaras Hindu University, they've translated. I'm still not good in Sanskrit to read, so I can read some transliteration. This seven volume, the yellow ones are your Charak Sanghita from your Western medical. This is your internal medicine book. These three are Susrut Sanghita, this, this blue one, these are called surgery book. And these are called Bhagavata Ashtanga Ridayam. It's basically a compilation of the, both the books. Charak Sanghita is the oldest internal medicine book. 120 chapter, each section. And I'm not going to go all over the slides because you will get the copy of the slides. You keep it as your future because many things you may not connect, may not understand because everybody who criticizes Ayurveda, Western trained physician, I tell them only one thing. If your thought process doesn't connect with the other thought process, please don't criticize. Accept it because one day you will find connecting the dots. What happened after this, after this course, a physician will find, connect all the dots and he's going to be a better physician because now he's going to look at beyond the body in the mind. He's going to look at what health is. He's going to look at the twin, they call epigenetics is. Shushrut also had 192 chapters. Shushrut worked with 125 instruments. Any surgical instruments, I being a surgeon, I got so fascinated. How did they who did a surgery 4,000 years back? Lancet, scalpel, needle, catheters, all been described in Shushu Sanghita. Shushu taught surgery, the Benaras Hindu University. He did a reconstruction of the nose called the forehead flap to reconstruct the nose. And he did a chick flip and repair of the cut ear lobes. You know, at that time, all the king and queen, they used to be the big, as big as a, you know, the stones <laughs> they can put in the ear, split ear lobe. The repair of the cut leaves, skin grafting. He was very, you know, very interesting chapter on the burn, the wound care. Shushu today is called the father of plastic surgery. These are the books in Shushu Sanghita. You can see all the instrument looks like a little crude instrument today from surgical standpoint, but from the surgical standpoint, these are all surgical instruments. Look at the instruments he used at the time. People always ask me, what kind of anesthesia did he use? You know, anesthesia is also pain is a sense of mind. You know, I don't know if you understand this or not. I have seen patients, same surgery we did. One patient wants a pain medication every three hours. Another doesn't need a pain medication for 12 hours, 24 hours. I had an anesthesiologist one time came to my head, a thrombosed hemorrhoid, one of the most painful thing. I was giving some local anesthetic to do some release. It said, no, 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 I'm fine. Just go ahead. So I had a 
a, a, another uh, a, a plastic surgeon in my town. She cut her radial nerve. She says, I'm fine. My pain tolerance is high. Don't give me anything. Go ahead and repair it. Anyway, what I'm trying to say, they have a lot of ways. And there was a murmur. Murmur, they used to miss the murmur point. They used to unconscious those patients. And after surgery, there's another murmur. They used to wake them up. And I have seen this thing in being applied in animals. Another one is called a control concussion. Control concussion, and they used to hit the head to have a little concussion, and then they used to wake them up. So these are all surgical equipments you see. So again, what you come to that, that Ayurved is a philosophy of a balance, and it's called Jatha Pindo Tatha Brahmandu. Pindo is our body microcosm, Brahmandu is a macrocosm. Balance between your macrocosm and microcosm is your Ayurveda. Ayurveda is based on the six Indian philosophical Shaddarshan. And very important thing is the connection between people always ask me about the connection between yoga and Ayurveda. Both yoga and Ayurveda is derived from the Vedic philosophy. Root is in the Vedas. And also in this six philosophy is called Shankha, Nai, Vaishishka, Mimangsha. And the fifth one is called Yoga Sutra of Pitanjali. So Ayurveda follows the six Shaddarshan. And one of the Shaddarshan is Yoga Sutra of Pitanjali. There cannot be any better connection between Ayurveda and yoga. Again, we talked about yesterday, Rajan talked, we talked about universe is made of space, air, fire, water, earth. We call it a Kiti, Yaptej, Marud, bomb, And it goes basically backward. We call it a gross body, then call it a subtle body. A causal body is unmanifest, called a gross to the subtle to the unmanifest. Five elements are inside our body. As I said, space is inside our stomach and colon. Here is the movement. Movement of harder intestine. Fire is a transformation. Metabolic process, your vision, digestion. Water is the fluid, lubricants, and hold the tissues together. Five elements are in, our, in, our, in a, every patient is a different format. The one which is, and these are, have no English translation word. So it is very important that you understand this word. Very. The one which has a more element of the air component is called a vata, and it will come next, and I will show it to you. They're called the gunas, their attributes. The so most important attribute is the mobility. They're mobile. They do 10 things at the same time. They will never get things done. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Fire is the most component. It's called the pitta. So there will be the, what will be their main attribute is your heat. They will heat it. Whatever the attributes of heat, anger, controlling. Kapha, main element is the water. Water is your fluid. It's a grounding. And the energy-wise, vata is catabolic. It's a breaking down. I'll show it to you. Vata looks like ectomorphic. Pitta is metabolic energy. Kapha is called anabolic. Anabolic is that they're, they're growing, you know, like little kid, rounded kid, that's anabolic. So British Airways one time put an advertisement and says, what kind of, what type of person you are? And the example they gave, a, 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 there is a flight got canceled, a person comes in and asks him, hey, when is my flight? Where should I go? What should I do? What can I do? <laughs> Just running all over. But Peter goes to the counter, he says, what time is my flight? When do you want me to come back? Come. What is my seat number? That's a pitta. Kafa sitting in a chair. He says, okay, call me half an hour before next flight. Nothing bothers them. Nothing bothers at all. Or if you see the functionally. So say, say you send somebody email and get a, a reply right away. He said, father, because their mind is mobile, you know, the mind is mobile. You know, we do a sun salutation. When there's sun salutation for Vata, we do a very slow, very organized control way. But when we do for the Kapha, we do very rapid, very fast sun salutation. So if you get an email right away back, it's a Vata. And you send an email, they'll read the email about 10 times, they analyze everything, then send you a nasty email back, the Pitta. Why? I'm the king. I'm the hood. Well, who are you to tell me? And Kafa is in one email. 
no response, two email, no response, three email, no response. After 40 email, they wake up. But only difference is when the kapha wakes up, they're, you know, the, well, the real attachment and they'll get attached. They say, why did you send me? But, do but the body wise, they will all look like they're called, you know, ectomorphic. Vata looks like a thin, and there will be like 90 pounds of the boots on. They can eat everything. They'll never gain weight. Catabolic energy. Pitta is a mesomorphic, middle of the line. And kapha is called endomorphic. Kapha is always rounded. By looking at the body, you can know. Looking at the eyes, you can diagnose. These are called the dosha diagnosis. We do it all the time. In fact, when you do in the live presentation, I said, I'm sitting here. I look at everybody. I know what your dosha is. I know what kind of disease you have, and I can treat you. And that is called the intuition. People always ask me what is intuition. Intuition is a belief without any reasoning. And that happens because I look at an eye, I can tell you. Look at a nose. Vata has a little bit of a crooked nose. Pitta has a very sharp nose and hot red, you know, so that coloring. And kapha will have a broad, wider nose, is your kapha nose. They can get a quiz, think down an online quiz and get an answer. You can do a self assessment of your doshas. Yesterday, Rajan was talking about prakriti and vikriti. Prakriti is your, the amount of vata, pitta, and kapha you have within you, which you were born with. And what is that called? Jatha pinda tatha brahmanda, imbalance between your macrocosm and microcosm through the environment and your lifestyle. There'll be change called a vikruti. So what is the function of the Ayurvedic practitioner physician? Convert the Vikruti into a Prakriti. Because in a Prakriti, when you're born, you have no disease. All the disease, remember I showed one slide, I am the cause and I am the cure. These are the components. You can have easily a Vata or Pitta or Kapha. But generally we have all the three in different, in different portion, Vata, Pitta, but with Vata, Pitta and Kapha, Generally, we do the pulse diagnosis, and I'll show you a little bit later. Pulse diagnosis will say Vata 3, Pitta 2, Kapha 1, or say Pitta 3, Vata 2, Kapha 1, or Kapha 3, Vita, and you always write it. But that is your present state of your Vikriti. Then what you do, we do a three fingers pulse diagnosis. We shut down the artery and let the blood come up. When the blood comes up, when you feel the pulse, that is a Prakriti. So we know how to convert Vikriti to Prakriti. This is the, somebody sent it to me. This is your, called Michelangelo's after two years visit to United States. That is called what the macrocosm has done to the microcosm. The, and it's a classic, whoever did this, uh, your uh, photoshopping, you know, it's a truncal obesity, it's a classic metabolic syndrome sign. Very intuitive, you know, find your Prakriti, that you have a glass of water, which is no test, close your eyes and drink a little water. If it is a little bitterish, it is a butter, that sour is a pitta and so it's a kapha. And I'll show you to six taste and how they connect with your doshas. This is very classic test. The vata resides in the colon. Pitta resides in your, in your small intestine. Kapha is in your stomach and the lung. So all the yoga poses, which are below your belly button and grounding is related to Vata. All the yoga poses, which are related to your belly button. Like if you can think about Noka Asana, boat pose, or Satubandha Asana, or you can do a, your Ustrasana. Anything related to your belly button, related to Pitta, and anything above, up, all uplifting. See, Vata is always mobile. They will be doing all the jumping up and down. You need to ground them. And Kapha, I love the ground except to get them up. So Vata, most important thing is they're mobile, they're dry, and they're very cold and very light. These are called gunas. These are called attributes. I will have described 20 opposing attributes for each doshic people. 
So this is like will be your gross and subtle, soft and hard, slow, dull or sharp, static or mobile. And we remember this thing, you know, when you're studying Ayurveda, we used to memorize all of them and we find it out. And then what we look at, we look at the all the attributes of Vata. Vata is mobile. That is most important company. That light, that dry. So if you have a Vata person, you put a little oil in, the oil will be gone right away. But the Kapha is very oily. If you put a Kapha person oily, the oil will stay on the skin. Pitta, most important is hot. They're very hot. Then they're also light. You know, these are called uh, rest of your gunas. And Kapha will be soft, slow, but grounding. They're heavy and grounding. And you have to do the law of opposite. So if you look at Vata, the most common, common factor in Vata and Pitta is the light. So Vata is dry. So Vata will be balanced, would be oily. So Vata will love to have a popcorn. But Vata will need to have a popcorn with a little bit of a ghee in it or butter in it. That will be balancing your Vata. So if you look at our all our the grandma's cooking. If you look at they're all called tridoshi cooking. Or just simply say you have a say food, you can say a, a, a baked potato. Baked potato is vata. You put a little bit of a butter in it, it's oily. What is oily? It balances the butter. Pitta is your fire, so opposite will be cold. So all anything with the the cold will be that. And kapha is heavy, anything light. So kapha will be eating your popcorn. Kapha will be eating your cauliflower. Kapha will be eating your say, cabbage. Vata will be the opposite. Vata will be heavy, like a mushroom or your, say, uh, pumpkins, you know, like the, we will come up to that. And pitta will be all about the cold. So as I said, all of us in our doshas called the law of attraction. We get attracted to the gunas of basic attributes, but you have to practice law of opposite. Like if you're mobile, you have to be grounding. If you're grounding, you have to be mobile. It's very important that. New concept I'm going to go over in next 10 minutes before you go for the, your diseases, that what are things you need to know? Dhatus. There are seven tissues called Sapta Dhatu, Rasha Dhatu, Rakta Dhatu, Mamsa Dhatu, Medha Dhatu, Osti Dhatu, Majya Dhatu, Shukra Dhatu. Rasha is a plasma, red blood cell, Mamsa, Medha, fat, Asti is a bone cartilage, Majya is a nervous tissue, Shukra Dhatu is a reproduction, then it produces a substance called Ojas. Whole digestive system is supplied by your parasympathetic nerve. So when you put a food in the mouth, your whole practice should be your activation of parasympathetic tone. So what happens here in West, food is a calorie you need to burn. When you do burn the calorie, it's sympathetic. It doesn't burn. It doesn't convert into subtle tissue. It comes to the fatty tissue and then it became a little bit more obese and obese. The food doesn't get into what happened to the toxin. It's called ama, ama pachana. Ama is a high cholesterol. Ama is your high uric acid. Ama is your high sugar. And these are the all inability to digest. And digestion is that very simple. Use your all seven, or sorry, five <clears throat> senses and we call it seven coloring fruits and vegetables. It takes five days to make each tissues, sapta dhatu, and the dhatus are converted with the color agni. Agni is your digestive fire. Actually, Agni is in the every organ. Your liver has called a Bhuta Agni. There are five Agnis. Your thyroid has an Agni. Your every cell has an Agni. There are 40 different kinds of Agni. If you're interested about a practice, you go to my YouTube, Dilip Sarkar Yoga, go to YouTube. I have the whole YouTube practice called Agni Deepana. How to ignite the 40 different kinds of Agnis to be in a good health. When Agni is in, ignited, you get what is called your, your glowing. Somebody sent me, you are glowing. The glowing means you are producing your tejas. 
So when your Agni is very strong, digestion is good, you get a clear tongue, you get a fragrance. There is no smell in your excreta. There is no smell even in your body, you know. But when the Agni is not good, that means food are not digested. So think about it. Our stomach has an oven. So you put your food in it, the food needs to be digested. So you are drinking a glass of cold water before your main meal, you're shutting down that oven, shutting down the Agni. So Ayurveda says, no cold water before your main meal. During meal, you have all the digestive enzymes, don't drink a lot of water, because if you digest those enzymes, you have no way you are going to get it digested. So they said, if you want to drink a water, drink about an hour after a main meal. And it's very interesting. The whole water metabolism is Ayurveda is fascinating. Here is one I said, 40 main types of Agni. When you go through the Agni and we understand Agni, you will understand all of them. The Agni is what you are all the, your sense organs, Agni of the, all the dhatus. There are three malas. And I have the whole practice. I put it in the YouTube recently. Sotamsi, what is called a nadi, nadi shodhana. Remember, we said agni deepana, ama is a toxin, ama pachana, digestion of your, your all the toxins because your digestion was not, not, and that ama goes to the channel and blocks the channel. So when the channels are clean, these are called sotamsi or sota. Prana teja vojas is another concept to understand. Prana is your life force. It's a subtle energy and it keeps us awake, alive. And prana is not your breath. Breath is the carrier of your prana. So if you think about prana is like electricity, breath is like your electric cable. Tejas, on the other hand, is your agni. So your agni, the tejas, and it is related to pitta, and it is a cellular intelligence. Prana is your cellular communication. And ojas, which is called, you know, kapha originated cellular immunity. And ojas is formed after your digestion of the food. And a perfect health is a balance of the prana, teja, and ojas. As I said yesterday morning, Prana is flowing, Teja is glowing, Oja is building. In diet, in Ayurveda says that if the diet is wrong, the medicines are of no use. But if the diet is right, the medicine are of no need. So what the diet means, that Ayurvedic nutrition, it says that once you properly digest it, you have a appropriate hunger and thirst. You have a clear belch. You have a lightness in the body and mind, no smell in the excreta, normal natural urges, strong digestion, easy elimination, and a good night's sleep. The food Ayurveda describes as a sixth taste called rasa is, you know, there are four tastes in West. We call it a bitter, salty, sour, sweet. Ayurveda has two more. One is called your astringent which is contract and another called a pungent, which is the heat, what is in the chili. Another is called a virya with a potency, food can be heating or cooling. Vipak is a posta prabhav. You know, these are the things when you go into a little bit more in Ayurveda, you will understand. But look at the six taste, what the six taste does. Your tongue has all the areas of the taste. So what happens when you put the food in the mouth, the Tongue doesn't know it is a fat or it is a protein or a carbohydrate. It only knows the taste. Based on the taste, it ignites a digestive fire. Bitter is the strongest digestive your stimulus and sweet is the slowest. So astringent, bitter, pungent, the vata is attracted to. Salty, sour, sweet, kapha is attracted too. So kapha people will be eating astringent, bitter, pungent, and vata will be eating salty, sour, sweet. Pungent, salty, sour is your pitta. 
So Pitta will be doing opposite. Law of opposite is Ayurveda. So one thing is that Ayurveda says, eat in a subtle environment. And Ayurveda doesn't talk about the kind of food or whatever. Ayurveda says, you have a food with six tastes in every meal and seven coloring food. You know, it's not only green, green, red, red, vibjur, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So six tastes, seven coloring, that's your exactly what you need. Eat when your stomach is one third full, one third water, one third empty. It's like your like a washing machine, so it can help you, I guess. Wait until after the main meal, three to six hours. Sip a little bit of water with milk. Do not, do not drink too much water. It dilutes your enzyme and eat freshly cooked meals. These are called Ayurveda. These are the poses you know, we use, which is called the water balancing poses, and we teach them in our practice, but I just give it to you just to keep them all grounding poses. Pitta balancing poses, you see all about your belly button. This is your belly button center. This is the belly button center, Matsasan. This is your Dhanurasan. This is your uh, Setu, Setu Bandha Asan, Nokasan. All anything centered on a belly button. Kapha, you can see all the uplifting and your the powerful asanas. So, but this, just keep it, you know, in your, in your packet and you will be able to use it. These are the tridoshi. That means all the doshas can do this. Let's talk about little Dinacharya and diagnostic, fine. Dinacharya basically means a daily routine. In Ayurveda, the, the first, the six to 10, is called your kapha time when there is a digestive fire is very poor. So it says that breakfast should be very light. 10 to two is a pitta time. It's called, that will be the main meal. And two to six is a vata time. Come back again, six to 10 p.m. kapha time. So where the digestive fire is still poor, so the dinner will be very small, very early. 10 to two is a pitta time again. What it does at the time, your body digest and cleans. So it's a self-cleaning oven and it comes back again the water time. You wake up first thing in the morning. So Ayurveda uses the Ashtabhidda Pariksha, you know, eight diagnostic things, but most important is the pulse and tongue diagnosis. In the pulse, Normally in West, we do a one finger. In the Ayurveda, we use a three fingers. And use a three fingers, we generally use a right wrist for male and left wrist for the female, and you do both. Under the index finger is your vata, pitta, and kapha. And how do we know? It has a characteristic. Vata pulse is called a fast and slippery, like a snake, it's called a sharponari. Pitta, it jumps, it just really jumps at your pulse, it's called like a frog, it's called a manduk nari. And kapha is like called a swan, called a hangsa nari. Like when a kapha, like you have to call 911, so you cannot even feel the pulse. So if you look at the vata will feel like a snake, pitta will feel like a frog, kapha will feel like a, a swan, hangsa nari. Then also in Ayurveda, you can make all the diagnosis on the organs. And these are called the superficial pulse and the deep pulse is connected to all the organs. And this is a whole, whole day practice, you know, diagnostic pulse. But so remember, we do the pulse diagnosis to see our vikriti and prakriti. Like what is our level of our vata, pitta and kapha? And we shut down the pulse, we get into your prakriti. Tongue is also a diagnostic. The tongue, the way the tongue is, is a person laying down. This is the head, this is the feet. And if you look at that, your heart will be on the left side, two lung, liver is on the right side, two kidneys. And then when the organ is in imbalance, it shows up in your tongue. So this is a coating of the tongue shows up at the site of your imbalance of the organ. And in a pancha karma, as I said, if any of you visit India, please have a pancha karma done and you will be amazed. I can tell you just one example. You get a, your, uh, 
jet lag when you get a jet lag you cannot sleep 3 4 5 7 nights in a row but you go to a ayurveda they will do a jet lag is your water related disorder they will do a call a snehana and a swadhana to so talk about panchakarma again and finally for the tea to take home agni deepana ama panchana nadi shodhana srota shodhana and ojal sthapana It is all the way preparing for pancha karma, for the purvo karma, and I do it all the time. I have a oil, and I have actually a, a, a steam box in my home. And we do pancha karma after pancha karma. We go through and use some prasayanas for that. And uh, <clears throat> so we have Rajan. I have about one thirty-five, isn't it? So forty-five more minutes. Yes. Okay, let me just go over a few minutes with the uh, daily routine. Uh, there right. are some questions also people have posted on the uh, okay. chat box. Yeah, you so we'll go that. just, uh, you know, the cases will go a little bit of it quickly. Okay. So in a daily routine, which I follow, I'm sure all of, the, all of us follow, wake up between in the four to six in the morning, it's called a Brahma Mahurta. But when you get up for the yogis, I don't need any alarm, nothing. I wake up and I feel very fresh. I sit down in a, Malasana. Drink a glass of water called the Usha Pan. I just literally just gulp a little bit. It creates a called a gastrocolic reflex. That means I get a first bowel movement. Then, it, if it not, we do call a little bit of a Logo Shankar Prakshalan. Show you five asanas we do, and it starts your bowel movement. This is just to simply. I'm just sitting in my pajamas and I sit down, drink a glass of water. Generally, I drink also from your copper vessels. You know, I have the, all the copper vessels here with me. And then, if we do Sankha Prakshalan, we do the five asanas. Then we, after bowel movement, we brush our teeth. When we brush our teeth, we massage our gum. Then we do Jal Neti. Jal Neti every time. Then you do our generally in Ayurveda we, we do a called a Avyanga. It's so put an oil massage in the body during morning workshop and do it. So first thing when I when I do it, I get up. When they get up. I put my body high up against the wall. The tadasana, very important. I showed it in the practice. Then do the jal neti, do the sutra neti, and really, when somebody wants a modification, I said, just do your jal neti and tongue scraping, and it will totally change your lifestyle. So, with the breakfast is very light in yoga. It's not like a Western, like it says, uh, you know. You know Have a breakfast, like King. Breakfast is very light, and have a main meal as a lunch between ten to two, which is the pitta time, and then drink water one after after meal. Do not dilute your digestive enzyme. No nap. Nap is very uh, called a kapha forming. Except you know when somebody is in a vata stage of our life, which is our older life, you can do it. Afternoon, the fruit is eaten separately. Fruit has a separate enzymes, and the fruit. Really uh, interferes with the absorption. It is called intestinal glycoprotein and interferes with the metabolism of a lot of a lot of medication. The organ is called cytochrome P450. So Ayurveda says, drink also uh, have also a seven coloring fruits, but a separate snack. Very light dinner towards your sunset. Drink a glass of water or a warm milk and sleep by 10 p.m. Very simple way. Before going to bed, what we do, we call a oleation of our nostril. Take a little oil. I can generally use a ghee. Use my left little finger. These are actually personal practice. We really don't show it to anybody. We put a little oil, and what the oil does that your the inside of the nose doesn't get dry. So all this, you know, nose stays open. So we say. We sleep through our nose. If we, the nose gets blocked at night, then we start breathing through our mouth. We end up called your sleep apnea. So let's uh, stop sharing it. Uh, this one, and I will answer the question. And let's go and see a little bit of. Cases and Rajan, I will want you to read the questions for me, so that uh, it will be easier for me. Yeah, I will go backward. The first question is: 
For a kafa person, do you suggest they eat their first meal after 10 a.m.? At a kafa person, for every person, if you want to have a big breakfast, I will push it between 9 to 10 in that period of time. It doesn't matter whether kafa, vada, pita. And be sure that your main lunch, main meal is there as a lunch. Personally, myself, I do the morning practice. I wake up very early at the morning practice. And I will have the first maybe little cup of tea or a water, anything by almost by nine o'clock. Then if I have any, any, you know, I do a little bit of a oatmeal uh, yogurt and I use little uh, almond and uh, uh, dates. By 9.30, 10, I'll have a breakfast. The next question is, does menopause change panchakarma? Since no. there is no ratta moksha and change in digestion. Okay, always remember one thing. This is we do all for the female health. I have a whole YouTube channel of the women's health. The older women's health, either it is a premenstrual syndrome, pregnancy, lactation, menopause, these are all hormone related. And a practice of yoga is primarily, is called altered hormonal homeostasis. Limbic system, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis. So if a physician will understand. So we really do not consider in Ayurveda, actually Ayurveda do not consider a menstruation, pregnancy, you know, everything. They're part of normal physiology. If you're doing something before, you keep on doing it. Don't try to do anything new in that time period. So coming back for your, your menopause, if you have a menopausal symptoms, yes, we do like you do some practices because we know, but overall, when you do a global yoga practice, it really balances your altered hormonal homeostasis and people do not get, I've seen so many yogis and yoginis, they have a normal pregnancy, they really don't know anything about that, they have any problem, Ministry, I know menopause, they don't have any symptoms, but I just kept on doing, say, Karo Yog, Rahoni Rog. Uh, next question. Here, where one doctor writes, when one tilts the head, water can go into the ear with a question mark. In other words, how do you deal with it? Or does it go into the ear? That kind of question. It's not a year. It also goes to the brain. There is a collectivity from place plane, but nose is the most resistant. You think about it, when you go to the public pool, you take a dip, you have no idea. Somebody may be pissing in that, in that, in that thing. Nose is the most resistant. We are here. Think about you're in Delhi or you're in Mexico City. You are breathing. There is a connection between the nose and the mouth and call it called eustachian tube. Even the water goes to the eustachian tube. Even by the time what we do, we do the jalneti. And after Jalneti, we do a Kapalbhati Pranayama. So let me just, uh, just demonstrate to you. Come to my class, you will see. Or maybe Rajan will show it to you. After Jalneti, we bend it down like this. We do our head up there. And we do five Kapalbhati Pranayama. Head down. Head on one side. other side, and in the head called frontal sinus, five times. So water really stays in the, initially the water will stay in the sinuses, come up. What happens that above your nose, there is a plate called a cribriform plate. I don't know if you're a physician or if you're a physician, no. So the nose, we do the surgery in the brain. So the nose is the surgery for a pituitary gland. So the water does go even to the brain, but it just clears up, nothing. There is an incidence of two amoebic related death after a jalneti, but the amount of people who have a jalneti also have the problem. So after jalneti, do the Kapalbhati Pranayama in four different positions and do your frontal sinuses, you will have no problem. You will have some drainage throughout the whole day initially but slowly it will go away. 
Uh, one other question is, somebody has asked, can you please provide your daily yoga practice schedules uh, to Dr. Sarkar? Yes, you can go to my YouTube channel and I have a YouTube channel on my daily practice. You'll see that. Okay, and now there is one hand up, uh, Dr. Malti Poddar. Uh, go ahead, you can unmute yourself and speak. Yeah, this question is for uh, Dr. Sarkar. I yes. just wanted to know, in Ayurvedic, is there any exercise especially for eyes and AMD, like age-related macular oh, degeneration? No, no question about it. You know, Ayurveda yoga, think about it. The whole practice of Ayurveda yoga is anti-aging. Look at us. I don't want to tell you how you feel, how you act. Do I show my age, you know? It is an amazing experience as an anti-aging experience. I'm losing all my hair, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm 10 years older than uh, uh, Rajan by calendar. But for mind, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I don't know what, 39, 29, 21. So AMD basically is an age-related macular degeneration. And for the eyes, we exactly do all the time. We do the tratak. Jyoti Tratak, Jyoti Tratak. And remember one thing, we'll be all telling you the reductionist approach. You know, Rajan can show his, with, with his machine, you know, you do the Lubastrika Pranayama, you got this thing, this thing, it's great. But that's not a sustainable practice. That is called transition. Yoga and Ayurveda is called the art of self-healing and art of transformation. Transformation is a last thing, like people like us. I'd opened her surgery 20 years back, 15 years. I've not touched a single pill. I'm enjoying a good quality life, but yes, yeah, I do. I follow a Ayurveda, Ayurvedic and Ayurvedic Dinocharya. I follow a life and it's not me. Come to my class, come to my town. Hundreds of people in my town, which have a, they have, the, the doctors taking them out from the medication, reduce their medication, improve the diet. It's, it's an amazing experience. So again, it's not a disease related. Remember first word we said, what even the Hippocrates say. I'm not interested about the disease a person has. I'm interested a person who has a disease. I'm not interested about your, you know, age related macular degeneration. And I'm not related about AMD. I'm talking about a whole, whole of you. And when a whole of you get better, AMD will get better. There Thank, are two you. Other Thank you. Questions. There are two other questions here. Sure. And sure. I think both of these questions, the answers are listen to yourself. The first question is, if someone fasts over 18 hours a day, what kind of food is suggested for two meals they eat? Should it be warming for the body or cooling? This is a person with more kapha active and some pitta also. And you've already answered this question. And the other question is, what is the concept which says for breakfast, eat like a prince, for lunch, like a king, and dinner like a pauper, but in Western lifestyle, uh, we do the opposite, how to adjust. Yeah. So, go I can, I can, I can guarantee you, you have been eating like a Western, and what is happening? You have a high cholesterol, you have a high sugar, and you have a all lifestyle-related disorders. I'm going to come to you shortly. I'm going to show it to you, the patients, and you'll see when they adopted this parasympathetic activation, relaxation response, and eat with the food at the lunch. Remember one thing, we are part of the universe. We eat our food, food get digested with also the sunshine, would get digested with our exposure to the nature. And initially, if you go to, if you go to, if you go to India, like Rajan has seen, I have seen, yogis in India will have a one meal a day. They will have a one meal a day. And remember the meal, a khichdi, a khichdi, and a small veggie. And I don't know, you know, if, if Rajan wants to share with you, know, Rajan is exactly like a bird, you know, he eats this much and almost like a one meal a day. And we, people ask me, what is my diet? I say, your diet is you eat too much, quantity wise. Cut down. If you keep on cutting down, we cut down our food. And then what we do, 
We are fasting. Look at how much we are fasting. Where last meal is around before two, three hours before sunset, maybe six, maybe maximum seven. Drink a glass of water, maybe before going to bed. And then people say, oh, I drink a glass of water, I wake up at night. No, no, no. You keep on drinking water enough so you don't wake up. You last for about two through four weeks, neuroplasticity sets in, drink a little bit more. Have a glass of water. In the morning in the practice, first thing you were eating at nine o'clock in the morning or 9.30. So 14 hours you're doing a fasting, which is fasting is called assimilation and you're igniting Agni. Fasting ignites your Agni. So that concept of whole Western concept, the moment you get out that and get into the yogic ivory concept, you will find a tremendous amount of self-healing. And I'll show it to you just right now. So a question is all done. You can proceed to the next. Okay. So let's go for the cases. And I want to show you these cases with you. And we'll go one by one. And you will see, you will see that the what improvement they have made. Okay. Same thing with nothing to disclose. We'll go for the cases after cases. And this is a psychiatrist. He came to me, just give a testimonial, musculoskeletal, 63 years old, white male, seven months, he suffered from back pain, groin pain, hamstring, comes to my class. I showed him something, some of the you know, practices which all of you can come to my class and see. Then the final outcome is, I recently went to Virginia State Race Walking Championship qualified. He was a non-believer. After his self-practice, he said, I also promote yoga to my patients. You cannot have a better testimony than this. A Western trained physician totally converting because of his self-healing. He healed himself. This is a lady. She came with a multiple 45 years. She had seven back surgeries. I was wondering, you know, what happened? Seven, and there is a called a pyriformis syndrome. Actually, there is a nerve, a sciatic nerve, sitting on a muscle called pyriformis muscle. Pyriformis muscle, the, the asana for the pyriformis syndrome is your ordha matsyendra and asana, or your uh, spinal twist. You can say that spinal twist. He, she was a bedridden. She came to my class. She was laying down. And funny, I have never seen this. She brought a if she brought a yoga mat that thick, almost like a mattress. She said, I don't know where you got this yoga mat. You know, for us, I don't know if you have seen me or not. Many of you might have seen me practicing. I don't need anything. By the time I'm there, I can do my headstand on a, on a concrete floor and go to India. Oh, lovely. We can do all the practice in a concrete floor. Body feels great. I later started doing alternate nostril breathing on Lum Vilum Pranayama, laying down in the bed, do some meditation. Slowly and slowly, she started getting up and started sitting down in Sukhasana. And the word we use all the time, in stages, impossible become possible. Why? Like me, I was surgeon. I was bending over my neck, my back. I was like a, sort of like a stick. And I'm so flexible now, I can, like a rubber band, people say, oh, look at how flexible he is. I'm not flexible. My mind is making my body flexible and is also my practice. Look at this one. I'm a critical care physician, he's a physician that had a pain management issue. Look at this, he had a four back surgeries. And what is interesting is he was sharing with me, he said, all the four surgeries are done by the same surgeon. So I, if I needed a four back surgeries, I don't go to the same surgeon. But what happened after one yoga session, he said, I got better. That is called a transition, what you talk about. It's not a transformation. So he comes as a Western trained physician. He said, tell me, how do I get better? I said, very simple. He said, what? I said, you fixed your software. So hardware got fixed. It is mind over body because you cannot explain that at the time, but you can explain 
in yoga and Ayurveda that yes, it is a mind over body. This personally myself, you know, I just do it all the time because I have every data on me that I had a, a tremendous amount of disease, but I go for a myocardial perfusion scan. My whole myocardial perfusion scan is normal. What is more important is that, that my physician one time wrote it down in my chart. Patient is maintaining on lifestyle modification now is off all medicines. A Western trained physician will never do it. Oh, you have a cardiac problem? Yeah. I never did it myself. I talked with my physician. I said, let's cut it down slowly. Oh, no, no, we cannot do it. Well, we have to have aspirin, statin, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor. I said, listen, all my tests are normal, perfusion normal. Would you cut it down a little bit? Start cutting down, my tests are again normal. So we took about four years, four or five years, but I got a normal. This is a man, you know, Alan, he comes to me. He had a severe ischemic cardiomyopathy. His ejection fraction is called the heart, is a 20%, which is almost inoperable. It was seen by a cardiac surgeon, inoperable coronary artery disease, comes to my class. I said, why don't you sit down, do some pranayama, keep your spine straight and do some mudras and just slowly. And within about, I would say four to six months, he comes to me and he's doing this. I said, what is this? I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bakasan. I'm slowly doing it. And he's doing a halasan. And I said, well, did you go? Go to your doctor and get it checked again. He goes there. They got another echocardiogram. The ejection fraction is now 40%. I remember if I, yesterday when I presented yesterday first, that a relaxation response increases your preload, reduces your afterload, which increases your... Finally, he said, I want to do a headstand. Can I do a headstand? I'm all my doctor says, I said, up to you. Art of self feeling. Why? I said, put your head down. You will feel miserable. You won't be able to talk. You won't be able to breathe. Your face will be flushed. Your intracranial pressure will be high. Intraocular pressure will be high. But keep your head down. One day, two day, one week, two weeks, six weeks. Slowly and slowly what happened? Your Neuroplasticity will set in. Your intracranial pressure will come down. Baroreceptor sensitivity will take place. Intraocular pressure will come down. Intracarotid pressure will come down. Annomaya kosha to pranomaya kosha. If you don't have any imbalance in your physical body, your breath will be normal. So if your breath becomes normal and everything, just even relax, do it. He comes to after a few, few months, he's doing a headstand. But in the meantime, he's seen his doctor cutting down all the medication. So what I was telling you, people who are a physician here, you will understand that with the parasympathetic activation, with the relaxation response, look at now here within a period of about three to six months, one, 15, yeah, over a year probably. Total cholesterol drops down without the medication. HDL, the good cholesterol goes high up, 4 to 64. LDL is a bad cholesterol comes down at 65 and triglyceride drop down. This is without any medication. This is the effect of parasympathetic activation and proper digestion of the food without producing any ama, the toxin. Probably the physicians will understand what I'm talking about. You will never see this in Western practice. This is because Western practice is food is a calorie, burn it. If you burn it, what you're doing? Treating sympathetic tone. Sympathetic tone is totally counteractive. It, Think about digestion from the parotid gland up to your anal sphincter. The whole supply is your parasympathetic. In fact, parasympathetic is called calm and digest. Sympathetic is called fright and flight response. So <clears throat> this is just a showing that his first sergeant says they're not going to operate on him. There's another guy, cardiac cripple. 
Look at that, Mena Robert, you know, he has a surgery for a VSD in the heart in 1969, had a malignant hypertension, blood pressure was 150 or 250 or 150 in 89. Had a surgery for descending thoracic aneurysm, the atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, pacemaker. Literally, he is a cardiac cripple. Comes to my class, slowly and slowly, he gets into pranayama. He himself, he comes in the first and he, he does balancing poses. The balancing poses comes down the whole cardiovascular system. Then he does all the mudras. So when he's doing his mudras in a whole day, he's doing practicing mudras and you know, you know, he does every day and then comes to my class. His wife called me one day. I really don't know what kind of exercise he's doing with his fingers, you know? I said, honey, you will not understand. Let him do what? But look at that. Same thing is happening. All the blood work. Look at the blood work. Next on this, his balancing pose, he said, I want to do more balancing poses. Now he's doing a Nataraj Asana. You may not be able to see it from here, but you will see his total cholesterol is 145. HDL is a good cholesterol, 54, LDL, 76. And what happened? These people come and, and share their whole experience with me. Look at that I'm doing and look at my outcome. This lady had a multiple sclerosis and she also had a asthma. She didn't have multiple medication. She came in a wheelchair. I said, yeah, keep doing it. She's 59 years old. Multiple sclerosis, remember, it's an autoimmune disease. You know, multiple sclerosis is like a nerve, the covering of the nerve, like you say, electric cable, the covering of the cable is gone. Autoimmune disease in yoga is an imbalance in your immune system. You try to balance, do the balancing poses, do alternate nostril breathing. And again, we do not recommend you the reductionist approach. We recommend you a daily relaxation response followed by at least five to seven pranayamas. 25 minutes of asanas, 25 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation, daily practice, no question asked. Then if you have a diabetes, I say you do a little bit more for the diabetes, do, that will transform. Yoga therapy is the art of transformation. So she knew I was telling her, so she said, come, come on, let me see my, my, my card. I said, what? I put a license plate called transforming. I said, wow. You know, these are the people called art of self-healing. She put on a license plate transforming when she feels within yourself. And look at her, she's off wheelchair. In one month, stop taking medication for asthma, which she was taking for the last 20 years. With yoga, she has a, you know, less leg weakness, improvement of the balance in four months, medications for multiple sclerosis stopped and she put a license plate called transforming. What more evidence you need? This fellow has a Parkinson's disease. I do a class in my, in my area with your colleague yoga therapy for Parkinson's disease. But remember one thing, Parkinson's disease is called a water related disorder. It's a neurological disorder. It's actually the Sanskrit word called a Kampo Vata. Kampo means you're shaking. Kampovata. So he had a Parkinson for seven years and he's doing yoga for the last two years. So he comes, he says, I can do balancing poses. Try to balance it. I said, let me, no, 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 you don't have to hold me. I can do it. But listen to this, what happened. It improves my balance, my posture, my stiffness, back pain, and irregularize my bowel movement and overall quality of life. Did you understand anything what he says? Water disorder, first water disorder, people have a constipation. So when the water get balanced, you get a regular bowel movement. Water disorder causes your musculoskeletal symptoms called a stiffness and a back pain. So when you are an integrative physician, a patient comes with a Parkinson's disease, you're going to ask him, how is your bowel movement? Do you have any back pain? Do you have any drooling? So this is the way you will integrate the whole 
east meets west. From this neurological standpoint, this is stable and still continuing medication. One thing happens in Parkinson's disease, even remember Parkinson's disease has a dopamine issue, all the things, but Parkinson's disease has a stiffness, stiffness in the muscle and loss of balance. But they still have a little bit of a tremor. The hand tremor doesn't go away. He said, I want to do a head step. I said, go ahead. I have nothing, nothing against, why? I said, because you will be following your body. You're putting your head down. When you see, you don't have any more symptoms. When you see you are able to breathe, your body will go high up on your own. And I teach headstand to every person. I said, there is no contraindication. You have a neck pain, all this thing comes from a tightness. I'm going to break my neck, don't do it. I want to do it. I want to follow my body signal. Start doing it on your own. Don't let anybody touch you. But he tells me when he in a headstand, his hand tremor goes away. It's an amazing, amazing self-experience of yoga therapy. This lady, she also had a Parkinson's disease and she's actually the, uh, the director of the local Parkinson's disease and she started the class for me. She had it since 2000 when she fought. Remember, I don't know if you know about Parkinson's disease. The Parkinson's disease, people didn't live that long. They live 15, 20 years, that's the max. But now with this lifestyle modification, with three years of yoga therapy practice, strengthening her weakness of the muscles, no tremor, good strides in the gait, less rigidity, range of motion. Back Actually, these are the one I put it down from their testimonial. These are all coming out from their mouth when they come to my class. Can you imagine a Parkinson disease, Parkinson lady is doing like this? It's almost impossible to think about from Western medical practice. This is very fascinating because it changes your perception. This lady, Cecilia, actually she's a Filipino descent. She comes to me, she's an a CPA. And she's uh, 72 years and she had a stroke with intracerebral hemorrhage and uh, for the nine years, unable to walk properly. After three years of yoga therapy, feeling better, dressed up, walk properly and back to her work as a CPA. What I'm going to tell you, which will blow up your mind. So here she comes, some raggedy clothes, sitting down, eyes closed, you know, neck bent down. I mean, she cannot move nothing. So I said, Celia, just sit down with the spine straight. Look straight. Do your hand mudra. Put it over your knees. Close your eyes. Breathe out first. Take a slow deep breath and breathe out longer than breathing in. Fine. She did it a few times. She said, I'm started feeling good. I said, okay, keep doing it at home. Fine. Next thing, she comes after a few times. She had some raggedy clothes. She looked a little ugly and a little dirty and all this stuff. Now she has a pretty nice, she has a yogic outfit. She puts yogic outfit. I say, hey, does it look good? What's going on with you? I feel good. See, when I feel good, they look good. Next thing, she comes one day. She has some lipstick on. She has some makeup on. Comes. I say, wow, Cecilia. I said, yeah, it's great. Finally, when she comes, she, she has, look at this, all the coloring, you know, multicolored clothes with the hats on. And I just said, yeah, I have to take a picture of you, you know? So this is another transformation. When you feel good, act good, you dress good, you look good, you sit, you know, you, 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 you walk with your spine straight. I mean, it's this amazing transformation. And unless you do it, you will never see it. This is another fascinating anti-Western medicine therapy. This fellow, he is actually, he's, he's, he has a big yoga studio here, Maury Cook. He doing a headstand all of his life. And he had a cataract surgery. And a cataract surgery, all the eye doctors said, do not do, do not do headstand, do not do any pressure. Cataract, I know the eye was going to blow up and everything. Interestingly, his eye surgeon was also practicing yoga. 
in his life. So what he told him, if you have done anything before surgery, I have no concern for you doing it. Like same thing, all the women ask, I have a menstrual period, should I do an inversion? I'm pregnant, should I do my headstand? You know what I say? I say, have you been doing it before? Are you doing it effortlessly? I have seen, I have seen the yogis pregnant with a whole belly like this. They're doing a perfect push, you know, seated forward bend. They do a, you know, with with an asan, 12 o'clock at night. They go, they went for the labor, they lay down, they're breathing, relaxing, no labor pain. Next day morning, they come home. You know, we as a Western trained physician, we made all the women's issues, women health as a disease. But this is normal physiology. They've been doing it. In fact, there is a very famous Indian actress. She'd been doing yoga all of her life. And she had three months or six months pregnant. And now second, she's doing a headstand and everybody was upset. And there is a Russian weightlifter. In eight months pregnancy, she was doing 400 pounds weightlifting. She said, I've been doing it before at ease. So here he goes, six weeks post cataract surgery. He's doing a perfect headstand and he's still doing it. This is about five, six years back, and I, I know him very well, and he's, he's fine. So, this is my last slide. I'm able to answer some question, a discussion. We have about 10, 15 more minutes, 10 minutes. This is the famous quote of the Deepak Chopra. We have become used to looking outside ourselves for healing substances, but our inner resources are often more effective and entirely without side effects. The so medicine cabinet of the mind, the body is the best pharmacy. It produces antibiotics, diuretics, painkiller, sleeping pill, and tranquilizer. You name it, body produces it. So it's an amazing experience, amazing journey. Unless you do it, you will never, you will never think about what you can go through. Before answering any question, I want to show you at least three mudras, which you will practice daily. It's a very important mind. Remember the first yoga practice is Merudanda Achal Manasthi. Merudanda Achal means your spine has to be straight. You sit down in a chair, always keep your spine straight. If anybody has joined my morning class, I did it repeatedly. How to sit in a chair, how to sit, I have this collar your kneeling, kneeling stool, I have a kneeling stool all over. When I'm in front of my computer, my spine is always straight. So when you're focusing your mind, you do, this is called Hakini Mudra. You touch the tip of your tip of your finger. In fact, when you're talking, you will see that when you're talking to somebody paying attention, your hand will be like that without knowing. And kids do all the time, Hakini Mudra. Mind when they're very anxious, anxiety, you do a call your Shankamudra. Two hands, wrap right hand around the left thumb, left hand around right, touch your finger. It looks like your it looks like your conch shell. You do the other hand, touch your other hand, wrap it around. So what happened in yoga practice, you always also you do your your uh, Subtle body. So look at that. I'm closing my eyes. I'm closing my eyes. I'm doing it very easily. Closing my eyes, I do it without any effort at all. Then balancing both sides is your Dhenu Mudra. You touch the opposite finger, right index finger, touch left, left middle finger, right middle finger, touch left index finger, a ring finger touches little finger, little finger touches ring finger. Touch your thumb, like udder of and cow, dhenu mudra, balancing both sides. And I can do my eyes closed, get my eyes closed. I'm doing it because I practice. People ask me, physician ask me, I want to teach yoga. I can do it very simple. Keep doing it first. If you keep doing it, you will be able to. And teaching is nothing but sharing your individual practice. 
karo yog raho nirog. Transform yourself from rogi to nirogi to yogi. Rogi, and people ask me about the diet. Rogi has a diet called rogir pottu. Based on your vata, pita, and kapha disorder, we give a diet, rogir pottu. Nirogi has a dinocharya, daily routine. And yogi has a strong agni, agni deepon. Thank you for your time. We still have about seven, seven more minutes. I'd love to answer any more questions you've had or you have a comments. We're going to uh, do it until 1.35. There are questions in the chat box. Okay, so go ahead. Take it in the order that they have sent us. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sushma Mahajan asks, what about at late stage with atherosclerosis, wouldn't headstand uh, be dangerous? Okay, everything is dangerous. Everything is dangerous. Only thing is not dangerous if you listen to your body's signal. If your body says don't do it, don't do it. How do you know body will say? Body will tell you that if you do any imbalance in a physical body in Annamaya Kosha, it will be in your Pranamaya Kosha. So let's just, just show it to you what I'm talking about. It is very dangerous. You should not be even doing it. But if you want to do it, the so most relaxing asana is your Vajrasana. And you are not doing it one day. You stay here. One month, two months, six months. This is your stance. Put your head down. Put your head. I'm not, I'm not taking him. You know, all of our yogis. Iyengar at 96, he was doing eight hours of headstand because he's doing it all of his life. Put your head down. You feel miserable. You cannot talk. You cannot breathe. Keep your head down. Neuroplasticity will set in. Like, like me, I'm talking, I'm breathing. I'm no, keep walking. If you keep walking, your body is going to go high. And you are not going to go high up. You're going to high up. The amount your body will allow you. Nobody's touching. Nobody's helping you. Remember the word I said? You awaken the doctor with the new. I have a neck pain. My neck, yes, you have a neck pain because neck pain is not from your herniated disc and not from your spinal stenosis. It's your tightness of the muscle, irritation. If you do headstands, the relaxation, neck pain will go away. I have a neck pain. I was like a, so so my dear, I was like a stick. I was a surgeon. I was operating like this. My whole neck was frozen. My back was frozen. Forget about headstand. And all my physicians say, don't do anything. You had a heart disease, you had open heart surgery. It will kill you. If I have listened to my doctors at the time, I'm a Western trained physician, taking my aspirin, statin, beta blocker, S inhibitor, I'll still be a cardiac cripple. As pure answer did. So coming back to our answer is, Please don't do anything. Take some pill and start digging your grave. You'll be great. But if you listen to me or listen to Rajan, listen to Rajan, Rajan will say, I can do a little bit of pranayama. You'll see what changes you have in this machine. But that is not the answer. Answer is a transformation. Doing it every single day routinely. So again, listen, listen to listen to your inner inner doctor. Yes. Uh, next question somebody asked is how often colon cleansing is recommended? Colon cleansing actually in yoga is called a basti, and basti is generally recommended only when the patient have a vata disorder. Vata resides in the colon, and and colon cleansing. And the corona actually, the corona hydrotherapy generally is done by an expert Ayurvedic practitioner. And in this country, it's very, 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 you know, legally oriented. So if we really do anything, we tell them to buy a enema kit. Let me show you what it is. You'll be very, very surprised to see that we have, we have a 
enema kit like this. We'll put that one, give it to you, and we do a self into enema. So there's no time frame. It's all about diagnostic, and more and more you will know. And it is the enema of the basti is primarily for your water imbalances. So there are two people waiting to ask questions. Malti okay. Puttar, please go ahead. Uh, Dr. Sarkar, this is uh, yes. Malti Puttar. And mm -hmm. I have a, a condition called a spinal stenosis at L3, L4, L4, L5. Yes. And I didn't have a major surgery, but I had uh, just a minimal surgery in uh, Houston called as Vertiflex, where they put a titanic uh, I metal know. piece I don't know in what between. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that has improved my walking. And I, I'm not like disabled. I can do all my things uh, every day. But except I have to take at least one Celebrex a day or one Aleve a day or two Tylenol 500 milligrams. Do you think by doing uh, asanas or yoga, I can completely get rid of taking pain medications? All up to you. You are the, you are the creator of your destiny, number one. Number two, remember the pain in the back does not come from your spinal stenosis, does not come from herniated disc. It's an irritation of a nerve, contraction of the muscle. See, when I have a muscle pain, back pain, muscle spasm. If I would go to a doctor, they can give a narcotic, doesn't work. You know what it works? The muscle relaxant. They give a muscle relaxant. So all my yoga practices are relaxation response. Whenever acute back pain, the treatment is your back bend on a mat. I get a back bend, I do a little bit and I stay on the pose. And for the getting out of relief of pain medication or yourself, it's up to you. You are the creator of your destiny. But remember one thing, as a physician, we tell you, very, very important. Any back spinal stenosis, herniated disc, if you have a motor weakness, like if you have a foot drop, toe drop, get a surgery done right away. Do not get surgery for pain. If you get an operation for pain, you create more pain. But if you have any sign of motor, motor symptoms, have a surgery right away, not the sensory. One more, last one, I think, but time has fortunately, come. Fortunately, I... Go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, Sundara Kulkarni, please go ahead. Ms. Kulkarni. I have a question. I would, yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Kulkarni, an OBGYN yeah. from sure. Houston, Texas. And I would like you to show the mudras one more time, especially the fingers, Shankar mudra is okay. The third mudra. And the second question is, after you have knee surgery, the surgeon specifically say, don't sit in uh, Sukhasana or any other asanas. If it is one side where you have one normal leg and the other is surgical leg, where do you compromise? Can you do it? I know it is up to you, but uh, can you do it? Can you do it slowly? What can you do? Come to my class. I have yes. about five people who have a bilateral total knee replacement. They go okay. all the way down to the squatting pose and get sucked. Yes, it is all in stages. And yes. even after a total knee replacement, it is all the fibrosis. So what mm -hmm. you will be doing in a total knee, you will be just sitting down here. You'll be holding one and stay mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And develop the neuroplasticity. And then without the pain, you'll do a little bit more. Yes. See, it's Can in stages. That. Okay. And then go all the way, we'll be able to go down and sit down with the nice cyst and total knee replacement, total knee replacement does not preclude as long as you are listening to your body and doing it in stages. Don't do it in one day. You'll be, you'll be miserable. You're a physician. In fact, you know, the best thing will be for you when you do it in stages, you will feel the physiological changes within your body and mind. It will be excellent. Just take it, just get it, get it, get my book. My book has all these information. Okay. Because this book is written for this course. Okay. Well, just have the Amazon, Amazon has it. And last mudras, if you were to see, I would do with my eyes closed. The right index finger touches left middle finger. Right middle finger touches left index finger. Right ring finger touches left little finger. Right little finger touches left ring finger, touches the thumb. My eyes are closed. It's balancing both sides of the brain. It's called a Dhenu Mudra or a Shurubhi Mudra. 
Shrobi. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Karo Yog. Karo Yog, Rahani Yog, huh? Right. <laughs> Our you. time has come to an end, but we have five minute break. So if you want to continue entertaining questions, you can. Okay. Everybody has a question, I'll be glad to answer because I'm talking about from the personal experience, not from me, all the people who are benefited. We have a vast amount of information. There are people who have posted more questions on the uh, this thing. Uh, one person writes, I have overcome all kinds of back issues through yoga and have remained healthy with daily dinacharya and no medication. However, a recent rotator cuff issue has remained chronically painful despite weeks of physiotherapy. Sure. What would you recommend? Yeah, physiotherapy actually, you know, the physiotherapy shoulder, shoulder is a ball and socket joint, rotator cuff therapy. And the most important, the, 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 the what has done in the shoulder is a hyper abduction and external rotation, if you understand my meaning. So the most important therapy for rotator cuff in you know, a shoulder Actually, I have a whole YouTube channel on the frozen shoulder. It's called Pashchim Namaskar. You know, you do try to do a Namaskar Mudra in the back. So you will be sitting down here. Yeah, you'll be able to sit. So bring your hand. You know, if you have a frozen shoulder, you may be able to hear, stay here. Keep your spine straight, eyes closed. Do a breathing out, longer than breathing in. Five to 10 breathing. This thing will happen slowly. You will come up to a a Namaskar Mudra, and slowly we'll see eventually one day we'll come up to here. I have the same issue on my right shoulder. I had a rotator cuff tear and look at, and look, and look at my level of flexibility. And remember, the pain doesn't come from the bone, doesn't come from cartilage. Pain comes from the ligaments and the muscles pain fiber. So tightness of the ligament, tightness of the muscle causes pain. The relaxation lets me do a Pashtim Namaskar. So incorporate a Pashtim Namaskar in your lifestyle. I can get you what is called the Western money back guarantee that your shoulder pain will go away. Uh, there you. are two more th points, uh, questions there. One is, are we going to watch that video? And the second uh, person writes, oh. I have dry cough for many years. My lung doctors gave up any suggestion to heal me. Yes, you have a dry cough and a drug. Do a ujjayi pranayam. So do a ujjayi pranayam. Mm, mm, mm. So ujjayi pranayam really originates where the cough comes from, daily practice, and with a wonderful experience. And second is a Jalneti. If you do a Jalneti, Jalneti is a wonderful therapy for a chronic cough. You know, as a Western train, Western personnel with Western mind, you won't be understanding all this stuff, but slowly you'll be able to. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch my, uh, uh, let's see, my input, input, I'm going to take out my airplane. So I'm going to share with you. Uh, give, me, give me one minute. I'm going to take my airplane out. So that somebody really guided me very well. But you have to listen. Input for your. built-in speaker input will be your uh, built-in microphone uh, how okay. long is the video uh, yeah I, just one minute oh, okay just one minute video let me see if i can find the video now it is somewhere here <coughs> you will be amazed uh, uh, and Rajan, I want you to have this video for your presentation. Okay. Because now, oh, now I have to be sure my speaker, MacBook microphone. You hear me now? Yes. Okay. Let's do a share now.
see, I got a sound is shared, get enough microphone, share, I can go to uh, view, enter full screen, and let me know if you can hear the sound now. Actually, you reduced. What is that? It doesn't matter. Carry on. Do, do you hear the sound? Yeah, yes. everything good. Okay. Like. What is science? People talk glibly about science. What is science? People coming out of a university with a master's degree or a PhD, you take them into the field and they, they literally don't believe anything and this is a peer-reviewed paper. It's the only thing they accept. And you say to them, but let's observe, let's think, let's discuss. They don't do it. It's just, is it in a peer-reviewed paper or not? <laughs> That's their view of science. I think it's pathetic. Gone into universities as bright young people, they come out of them brain dead, not even knowing what science means. They think it means peer-reviewed papers, etc. No, that's academia. And if a paper is peer-reviewed, it means everybody thought the same, therefore they approved it. An unintended consequence is that when new knowledge emerges, new scientific insights, they can never ever be peer-reviewed. So we're blocking all new advances in science that are big advances. If you look at the breakthroughs in science, almost always they don't come from the center of that profession. They come from the fringe. The finest candle makers in the world couldn't even think of electric lights. They don't come from within. They often come from outside the breaks. We're going to kill ourselves because of stupidity. <laughs> Excellent. This, this needs to be, uh, uh, let me see, uh, this needs to be presented at the beginning of our course. Mm. Because this is, the, this is the gist of our course, think outside the box. Yes. And whoever send it, you know, we know who send it, Manjunath, Manjunath send it. You know Manjunath very well. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I will share it with you. Please, do you, do you, you get the, you get the, you get the essence of this. Yes, 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 absolutely. And what do, what do you think? I think it's right on the dot. More than right on the dot. And I said, this is, this is all. Anybody has any comments on this video? Anybody yes. wants to disagree what the video has said? No, Dr. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Shushma, Mahajir, great video. May I carry you? This is the best quotation you have said. That's the best thing to say. Uh, because people don't uh, think outside that. Namaste ji. Actually, actually, what we all talk about, you know, the physicians, you know, in our in our spiritual practice now, physicians are the number one speaker. You know why? Initially, the physician, they're all scientists, two patients, they're saying everything. But after they keep on practicing, you know, so much you were just said, you know, you're a physician, you understand. I did the same thing on exactly two patients, had a two different outcome. Uh, we, are <laughs> running in, we are running into Marsha's time, but okay. I will request our uh, Johns Hopkins and MIT scientist. He's uh, wanting to say something. Go ahead. <laughs> Dr. Sarkar, yeah, very illuminating talk and uh, very fascinating perspectives. And this whole perspective on peer review. Uh, see, there's always, there are some people who are, and this comes from us, think of it as a spiritual belief. Some people are believers and then they put inquiry into it, right? So then, so those people are those optimists, right? And there's some people who are always pessimists. And what happens is when a field gets controlled by the pessimists, they turn that uh, uh, a system into a dogma, a religion. So there are religion, there are religious scientists who pursue their science as a religion. They fall into that dogma. And then they have uh, crystallized their brain and their brain's the thought process into that exact framework of systems. And there is no fluidity 
but that's not how nature is that's not how this world is and it is unfortunate but a lot of scientists or science also becomes a religion uh, a very religious dogma and so that is a problem we're saying uh, and that is true this so whole day discussion we can do lack of yeah. time thank you everybody yeah. thank you thank you thank you for yeah. giving thank you the opportunity and this wonderful presentation excellent yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you thank you so much uh, so i i have muted everybody so marsha please unmute yourself and uh, you can share your screen and take it from here dr marsha billes 